Now the archers will take out a melee weapon. Oh, she got me! What? Oh, bloody hell, Lucky. I thought I had her. <laughs> and bang, just like that. <laughs> Greetings, adventurers. It is I, Liz Grumbles. And this is Conan Exiles. We're going to do a right from scratch, beginners, uh, learner, driver kind of experience. I've not really done one of these guys before, and I certainly don't have all the knowledge of all the game by far. Probably forgotten half of what I've learned over uh, 800 hours of playing, so I don't have the thousands and thousands of hours. So I'm going to go through, bumble mistakes, pretty much run the game on standard settings. Uh, we've got uh, expedited uh, bit of uh, harvesting is at two instead of one, so double, uh, and things like converting thralls uh, and uh, taming animals will be sped up. But other than that, uh, I believe the night cycle, we're running at three times the speed, so shorter nights, but other than that, pretty much standard fare uh, and no admin cheating going on. All right, let's go. Finalized character, Lucky Hawkins. Guess what, folks? He likes to nibble on your arm. Uh, mods, we've kept it minimal. Uh, I have a UI overall During mod, and we have our Pippi just for management stuff in case something does go horribly wrong, lands. or I want to demonstrate Crucified something. Uh, other than that, oh, also that a sorcery tweak to improve some of the sorcery Death stuff. Comes Let's go. On black wings until fate intervene. All right, we're going to skip that. Pretty much everybody's seen that, I'm sure. Right, we're going to make a quick adjustment to the chat settings. My name is Lucky Hawkins, and this is Conan Exiles. All right, let's go. Behold, the broken one, highway. The very boundaries of civilization. Beyond the passage of our highways, by the wild places of the world where untamed savages make endless war upon each other. All right. You cannot pass Get away, you horrible bird. Wastes enslaved. Ooh, a no box. Prevents it. Take some food. Follow the road. famished. Any road. Drink some water. All roads lead to the city. All roads lead to the city, I see. All right, there we go. Perfect. Just picking up two pieces of fiber at a go. Wonderful. Found our first bit of equipment. Ah, here we go. There's a water skin and a note. I am beaten. Left to rot among the ruins of the past. There are others here. Slaves. Bandits and cannibals. Exiles from lands I've never heard of. Some of them try to scrape a life from the wasteland. Scrabbling the rocks and sand for their own place. I cannot go on. The life that I left behind haunts me. The sun over the glittering spires of Belverus is forever denied me. The smell of my daughter's hair. Combat roll. I will pass the ghost fence. <laughs> this cursed land will finally end me. What's over here then? To whoever reads this note, More stones. I leave the last of my water and this message. Stranger, you have my pity. You do not know how cursed you truly are. Oh, well, that doesn't sound very encouraging, does it? Right. Uh, I won't be doing too much role play in this, but maybe a little bit here and there. So if you hear me talking like this, a little bit over exaggerated, then that's the voice of Lucky Hawkins. Maybe we'll run into Jenkins. He's the one that got us in trouble in the first place. Let's go. Oh, big demon bad thing. Shoo, go away. Yeah, I'll, I'll punch you. I'll, I'll come, at, come at me. Come at me, bad bro. All right, marvelous. We have gained a level, so let's uh, interact Rod's with this book this here. Sandstorm. We were forced to take refuge before the wind scoured the skin from our faces. Let's get ourselves there more branches. The There's stones and Beasts. branches all over the floor we hear the here. Of their paws so we're just grabbing the ruins, those. And their howls and we're going to use those to craft wings. some stuff in a moment in the our pocket. I've put them to work crafting rudimentary weapons and torches from the loose stones and rough plants that dot this place. Small branches. I've yet to meet a beast that like fire. Branches very handy. Or the bite of the axe. We grab a bunch of these fiber from these plants. So I'm just using the basic interaction key and the WASD hex to move around, of course. 
Uh, I have my hard swings mapped to my control left control key, uh, and my alt key is uh, my combat roll. Uh, those are basically switched with each other in the keybinds. Uh, and yeah, they, we can look back with our vanity cam on a mouse button. Uh, don't miss a. I mean, I don't need every single branch here, do I? Okay, let's have a look now at our leveling. I press I and bring up the inventory. There's lots of other shortcuts for these various different sections. Uh, we will be for this playthrough following the journeys. So this is like the game's tutorial or, or guided playthrough uh, kind of information. Uh, we've just done gather plant fiber and now we need to craft and wear some clothing and this will give us eventually some rewards like supply materials those could be pretty heavy when you open that box up so uh, we'll need to have a box of our own to put those in uh, and we'll just follow along a few of these as we go uh, but first things first so let's spend some of our basic points uh, in here in knowledge uh, you can see here we've got uh, level 3, we've got two available points to spend and you can see the cost of each point and what it's going to grant you. This is for building, one of my early uh, go-tos. Uh, decoration here costs zero so I'm just going to unlock that, get that out of the way. Uh, we're going to want to cook some food for ourselves and we're going to want some weaponry. And for this particular playthrough I'm going to lean towards uh, Skirmisher uh, and daggers so we're gonna go stabby stabby and invest our points into um uh into what's the word i'm looking for uh, agility also unlocking uh these top level items here are zero cost so we're just going to unlock all the weapons uh categories and that way we can switch it up if something's not working for us or we face a particular enemy that may be uh a bit deadly for us uh, along the top here you've got all these subcategories so you've got the home these are your cornerstones uh, key things done a lot big big uh, again for the from a guidance from a game point of view they guide you towards some of the bigger stuff um, but some of the key items if you're really into building obviously you want to spend some time in construction area um, decoration that goes kind of goes hand in hand with that um, but survival is kind of the biggie that's where you want to focus early on unlock things like torches so we can see in the night uh, box maker is very important so we can put stuff down uh, and you can see in here um, sometimes it's not always as clear or intuitive I think as a new player um, but you can see the prerequisites so if we want to make box maker to put boxes and store things in uh, a prerequisite for that is to have the apprentice mason so we can click on apprentice mason there it takes us back to construction area and then we're just going to spend a point that we had uh, on apprentice mason and that means next time out we can unlock the box maker and so on and so forth and that's how the progression system kind of works over here we've got our attributes uh, as i said we're gonna spend our points in the direction of agility uh as we uh, level up so that we can use agility weapons like stabby stabby uh, it's also going to help us increase our stamina pool um, for things like dodging running away climbing and whatnot that's very important uh, vitality is a good one early on at least for five points because you can get passive health regeneration again depends on your play style i'm a bit clumsy i'm not got the best timing in combat so having something like a passive heal is quite useful for me over time but of course if you have enough potions and wraps like that uh, you can get away with it grit is quite beneficial early on because you can also get a perk called a tenacity perks are basically what happens at each of these big five point slots here um, and that will give you uh, uh, increases your armor by 40 points no matter what you've got on and uh, stamina uh, by 20 points so that can be quite crucial too expertise is another favorite of mine in terms of at least when you get all the way up the top as you progress along here you get perks to your tool durability your harvesting skills and capabilities um, and eventually if you invest all the way up to 20 points you can pick uh, one of my favorites beast of burden which means that when you're over encumbered or over cucumbered as i like to say uh, you can still dodge and move at full speed so uh, we're going to start off by investing in, uh, I think we're going to go for a little bit of grit and get ourselves towards this, uh, this flat buff. Uh, I think that'll be a good, good one for us because we're going to do a lot of running around and running away, in the, especially. Uh, the other thing actually is we have been asked or tasked with creating some clothes. So we can see in here in our inventory, uh, over on the right hand side, this is what you can craft in your pocket, as we'd say. So here, coarse leggings. Let's get some basic clothing done. 
uh, and uh, you can see it automatically equips it for you, which is a nice touch that they added into the game. Uh, and we're going to just make the four pieces here. There's no uh, head garment that we're able to make right now. Uh, I'm also going to make uh, a couple of sets, or this makes three at a time, uh, of these wraps. I'm going to move these uh, little bugs out of my pockets there. We're going to make ourselves some stone daggers. Bang. Marvelous. That's on slot one. Um, and let's see. We could probably make ourselves a nice hatchet or a pickaxe. That that means we'll be able to get ourselves some branches and some wood. There we go. Uh, we're going to make a bedroll. So we can put that down when we get somewhere a little bit further in. And that way, should the worst come to pass, uh, and we don't make it past a particular enemy, <laughs> or poison, or whatever happens, um, we'll be able to uh, respawn uh, at said bedroll, rather than uh, run all the way from the beginning again, which is nice. So again, we're trying to make this sort of beginner friendly. Um, pretty much base game, couple of settings that are changed, I'll list those in the old doobly-doo in the details below, in the description, um, and see if I can put a couple of uh, little timestamps in there as well, um, and uh, off we go. So if uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy this little playthrough, and we'll have some fun together. Uh, I will get back to some of the other things we've been doing, like Satisfactory and whatnot, um, but right now I'm really in the mood for Conan, I'm really enjoying it. So, and I've never really had a go at one of these beginner's guides, so my style of beginner's guide. Again, I don't know all the things, all the places, all the info. I won't give you all the best tips and tricks, um, but you can just see it from a, well, this is what Grumbles did when he bumbled through, and this is how I'd do it differently or better or whatever. That's completely fine. Feel free to give me some uh, beginner's tips or things you've enjoyed about the game or you're learning uh, as we go along. All right, let's put this... Uh, this bed roll down we can find a nice flat spot of land doesn't really matter where we put it now the thing with these bed rolls is they're kind of i think they're like one and done so if you put another one down they'll disappear um if you have to respawn i think we probably have to make another one uh, but yeah let's get ourselves a little bit of wood this gives us wood and branches we don't want to carry too much yet uh, as you can see one of the mods i'm running is a ui overhaul so it's uh, very different to the base game, but gives you a bit more clarity about, um, you know, temperature, what you're carrying, your, your weight capacity versus what's in your pocket, um, time of day information. There's a small compass you can see. Um, and of course your uh, food and, and water situation. I've just noticed we're a little bit thirsty. So we'll drink some now we're at 60% hydration. Nice, and that takes down 12 minutes. Okay, that's cool information. Uh, there is a little, uh, I don't know, demonic imp or something. Let's go say hello to him. Hi. Now, if I use my big hit with my control, we should be able to put a bleed on him. I got a little bit stuck in the corner there. There we go. That's what I like the daggers for, because that puts a nice little, nice little bleed action on him. Uh, now, we can also create um, some other tools. Let's get ourselves a nice hatchet. Uh, and a skinning knife and a cleaver. Get ourselves some wood. And if we can get ourselves some hide. Now let's see what this guy's willing to offer. We get our skinning knife. Skin this fellow. There we go. We've got 15, 14 pieces of hide. And now we can already make ourselves a better bedroll. This is the standard game one. Raw hide bedroll. Um, and for the same cost, I just have one that's from one of the battle passes or whatever that I got for, for just for playing the game. Uh, Zingar and Bedroll. So, does the same thing, just looks neater. Let's put that straight down. Now we have a new spawn point. Alright, we're going to uh, replace that again soon anyway. Uh, let's grab us some more plant fiber up. And, uh, oh look, a rabbit. Hello rabbit, would you like to be food for me? Uh, let's get my meat cleaver out. I'm going to chop that up, get some feral flesh and a bit more hide as well. Okay. So the different tools, like the skinning knife, is better at getting skinning, uh, uh, skins and things, hides, but uh, will also give you probably a little bit of meat. Um, and the cleaver will give you mostly meat and then maybe RNG will give you a little bit of hide as well. 
All right, now yeah. you can see the effectiveness of these uh, blades here. Look at that bleed. There's a stack of bleed, that little icon up to the top right there on the health bar, and this creature just bled out as quickly as that. Wonderful. Um, let's get our meat cleaver again, give that one chop. Typically, you get uh, a number of chops depending on the size of the creature. Rabbit was one hit. This one's giving us probably two, maybe three. So I've given it one hit with the cleaver and one with the skinning knife. And there we've got a nice bundle of hide and savory flesh, which we can cook up into a nice chop on a small fire. Wonderful. Now they also, some of the creatures often have young on the map like this roaming around. If I grab that, then the uh, parent there will get rather irate and come and have a go at us. Um, but I, if I take this, uh, they're very heavy in your pocket. So be careful of doing that early in the game uh, because you'll be over encumbered and you might be under attack by a number of those shalebacks. Um, but we could take this little baby, uh, as with a lot of the other animals in the map, uh, and put them in an animal pen and train it up and use it to either fight for us or just be a beast of burden is the most convenient thing to do. They can carry a lot of stuff for you. Right, we're not going to worry about that straight away though. Uh, what I have seen are these aloe plants. So we're going to come over here, just use our interact key on them, and we're going to gather a bunch of aloe. Uh, and this can be used to make, uh, in the early game, right from the beginning, in your pocket, we'll be able to make weak aloe potion. Here it is there. I'm going to craft all 13 of those. And uh, that's going to allow us to uh, regain some health. It's basically like a he healing potion. We'll put those on our hot bar. And we'll be able to uh, yeah, heal ourselves if we get in a scuffle and it's maybe not quite going our, our way. Or, you know, things will be pretty deadly uh, towards us at this early stage. We're going to make ourselves a build a construction hammer, uh, but we're going to try not to get too much into that. Um, I'm not going to include the building uh, too much in this playthrough because I want to focus more on playing the game and progressing and, I don't know, maybe running some dungeons, that kind of thing, just getting into the lore of what's in the game. Um, but uh, we will obviously set down a little home here and there. But, um, I'll probably just put the completed building up for a show as part of the video rather than the whole process. Uh, if there is a desire to see how the building and that works, you can let me know in the comments and I'll add it in. All right, so far so good. We have not been murderized yet. Now, there's a little thrall camp just over the ways here, this corner. Um, let's uh, pop a little healing wrap actually. So if you're out of combat and you have time, you can use a healing wrap um, because it may be cheaper and easier to come by the plant fiber and that heals you up as you've seen there with that little animation and the trick there is don't move while the animation's going on. If you move it interrupts the animation and you only get a smidge of the healing, a small amount um, that you would have been offered otherwise. Right, let's see if we can, there's usually three thralls around this little encampment. I'm going to try not to use too much of my prior knowledge, but obviously a little bit here and there. Please forgive me. I understand. Uh, there's usually a couple of them sitting around the campfire. I think they're further back for some reason. They're over there. Um, and there's usually a third one sort of patrolling around this area, but I don't see them right now. Uh, peculiar. Okay. Because um, I'd rather fight one or maximum. Oh, I think think they've been murdered by that crocodile. Oh, well, that's... Let's see if we can sneak over there. That's a rather big-looking crocodile. That's... Uh, I think that's a mini-boss crocodile rather than just an any old... Yeah, look at that. Uh, they've got some foot wraps. Unfortunately, not good ones. They have a chance to drop some good... You know, some decent armor if they have decent armor on them. Um, but yeah, it looks like things haven't worked out. Oh, there we go, just as I spoke of it. Leather apron, some more arrows and some gauntlets. So right click on these and it immediately swaps what we had on. Uh, there we go. We got some, we got ourselves a little bit better clothing and our armor has gone up to 45 from what it was before 29. So beautiful. Okay. The apron is just cosmetic, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, coarse leggings. So there's a pike. We can take that for now. Another free weapon. Um, and of course, uh, waste not want not, right? We might as well uh, chop them up and uh, cook them up. Bit with the cleaver, a little bit with the uh, with the knife. I, I'm trying to avoid getting into a fight with that crocodile. 
because really he's kind of helped us out a lot there he's taken those thrall <laughs> thralls out for us marvelous look at that we got a load of free food and some free free gear wonderful okay i'm over cucumbered so this is uh not so good let's get rid of that stone pike because we're not going to use it i think the human flesh is pretty heavy let's just throw that armor away oh by the way anything you throw away like this out of your pocket um spawns into a little bag on the floor so first of all you can go back to and loot that bag and pick the stuff up if you drop something you didn't mean to um but the other thing is there's a reasonably short timer and that will just vanish out of the world and no longer be your problem so you know it's an easy way to get rid of some bits and bobs uh you can also check the weight of each stack of items in your pocket by clicking on them and you'll see here weight so those arrows for example are 4.6 i'm gonna just say kilos for the sake of it um and therefore you know uh quite heavy i suppose and also we have these horns they think they can be used in armor creation but we're nowhere near that now so to be honest we could probably just drop those they have no benefit to us and they should be really reasonably easy to come by later on oh uh, yeah that'll do so we're carrying 78 out of the 85 maximum that we can carry right now okay let's carry on now there's a little um there's a chap along here um and he will teach us an emote so we're gonna go uh go over here have a little chat with him i think it's the polite clap emote um and this is this whole section along here is what's known as noob river um and this is where all the newcomers you can spawn in there's a two or three points along the bottom of the map and you come up to this area and it's reasonably safe you can get all your starter gear your first you know building whatever you want Another to do one, in eh? the game I could smell it on you. um tend to smell just a little more like despair oh thanks very much i think that means he Taylor, thinks i smell not as bad as some others so one. i think i uh, take the compliment <laughs> I take north. the compliment good sir all right so we're a little bit further in i'm gonna make another bedroll and we're gonna put one down uh, over here near this guy uh we can't build too close to him so we'll just come along the the water's edge a little bit here there we go you can use the middle mouse button to rotate the building or the placement of uh, such kind of things and there you go previous bedroll was destroyed spawn point updated so this is now our spawn point spawn point it will show on the map with a little picture of a bedroll you can see just underneath the marker that shows where we are uh and we're getting thirsty so let's come to the edge of the water have a little sip here till that says 100 percent on that bar also go into the inventory and click on use uh, and that will fill you'll see here that it says durability but what it means in terms of the water skin is it's really the content so out of 10 sips of water uh how much content do you have in that okay and now the rest of the map the world as it were is our oyster um what we're going to do is we're going to go and grab some sorcery skills which is up in a cave over here um and then we're just going to adventure around the the, the kind of the beginner's dungeon is down here once we've got ourselves uh, a little bit of armor and maybe ready, you know a bit more ready for that fight leveled up a little bit um so we're just going to uh go around here there should be a few encampments and and whatever else in fact they, i remember distinctly had a lot of fun i think we built a little settlement on this island here it was quite fun and there's a settlement of thralls there that are quite handy to go and get some workers for you or just have a fight with them um but first of all there's a few uh i believe they're called exiles that live along here like the three that we saw before that had, had that fight with that with that crocodile there's some more over here let's go and have a fight with them because again this is the newcomer area so we should be able to handle them in a fight let's invest some more points though and get this um grit tenacity increases your arm by 40 and your stamina by 20 so if we go back to our inventory score now our armor is at 101 already because we found this uh these medium gauntlets it's fantastic all right we have one more unspent point i think i'm going to invest that in um <laughs> i think i'm going to invest that in uh possibly some vitality to get some healing up passive healing going that could be handy or expertise okay let's go to expertise so that our tools last a little bit longer 
Not that they're too expensive to make or repair right now, but that'll uh, work in our favor over time. Um, and let's uh, let's see what these guys have got, because again, there's a chance they might drop some more armor like that. You know, some uh, some shoes. Okay, let's see if we can get a. Uh, ow! This guy's got a, a like a ranged weapon on us. Ow! Oh, get out of there! Okay, I think she shot him at the back. Oh. Oh, I missed. Oh. Now the archers will take out a melee weapon. Oh, she got me! What? Oh, bloody hell, Lucky. I thought I had her. <laughs> and bang, just like that. Right, well, there is an abject lesson in a bit of humility and not letting yourself get uh, so beat up. Wait, they're back up again and I'm down over there? This seems distinctly unfair. What? I... What? Oh my goodness, is that... I don't think that's normal server behavior. I don't think they should be up and... up and at them again so quickly. That seems... Uh, I don't think I've said anything in that regard, so I don't know what's uh, what's what there. All right, let's craft ourselves some some wraps and some healing potions. Uh, yeah, that didn't that didn't go at all according to plan. I honestly, I thought I thought I had them, but yeah, welcome to the playthrough, folks. If 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 my warm up words about not being very good at this stuff weren't you know, believable enough. Hopefully now you have the videographic evidence uh, to see that when I say I'm a no good... Oh my goodness, that's embarrassing. Oh well, it is what it is. That's how it went. We can't erase it from, uh, from the old history books. All right, get a few more of these branches. We might need a couple more stones. I, I want to get my gear back, man. That's, we didn't have great gear, but we had some gear. We had that, that clothing. I thought I honestly thought with that armor that we had we'd be uh we'd be golden. Okay, what do I need here to make the daggers? I need twenty stones, okay. So we keep gathering some stones by hand. Oh, so embarrassing, man. Oh I I, I hopefully I can take them in this fight because Um yeah. Maybe maybe I can't. Okay. I, I, I really didn't expect to uh, to go down like a sack of potatoes there. But apparently, I went down like a like a lead balloon with a hippo attached to it. Terrible, poor hippo. All right, here we go. Let's, let's, uh, wait, 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 wait. We can at least put some basic armor on, right? That'll give us at least some armor score. Oh my goodness, 85 light armor, okay. Um, yeah. Hi. Um, hello? Okay, let him swing and miss. Oh, 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 let the bleed take effect. Okay, wait and uh, roll. Okay, there's one. He's got a stack of blood on him. Oh, there we go, got him. So that's kind of how I saw the fight going the first time. Not gonna, not gonna, not gonna lie. Okay, let's take all of that. We'll take those arrows. Um, okay, let's go find our body. There's a body marker here, death marker. Let's uh, get all our gear back. Thank you. And, uh, oh wow, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm massively over cucumbered here. Well, all right, we gotta work out of the things we have in our pocket, what we do and don't need. Um, all right, let's chuck these grubs away, these insects. Uh, we got some pelts, we got some bees. Uh, we got extra foot wraps. Oh, let's get our medium wraps back on. Oh, and our nice apron. Okay, there we go. Got our armor back up a little bit. Tinker's kit, okay, steam, stone pike, we don't need that. Probably having a second set of blades isn't a bad idea because these blades don't last all that long. Okay, uh, campfire. Wait, we had that place, didn't we? 
Okay. Uh, how is our weight situation right now? So we're a little bit cucumber, but not too bad. Okay, let's get out of here. And, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe we get a little bit more hide. Oh, over cucumbered again. Okay, bad idea. Um, I know the human flesh is going to be heavy, so... I think we're going to need a bunch of branches. All right. How, how over cucumbered are we? Oh, we got four more human flesh here. Okay. We're throwing all this, uh, the, all these delicacies away. Um, that hide is really heavy. The hyena pelts. Okay. We get rid of those. Oh, there we go. We can run again. Perfect. Okay. Run away. Back to our little, maybe, I, oh, I didn't put the campfire down, did I? Okay. We'll have to make another one now. That's fine. I'm not running all the way back over there. Oh no, we still got it. Okay. All right. Number eight. Campfire. Boom. Okay. Let's put some food in there. Put some food in there. Uh, put some wood in there. Uh, you can hold shift. So click on a thing. Hold shift. Left click. Move it across. And it asks you if you want to split the amount. Set an amount and press the button give. Don't press the return button because sometimes... It uh, either doesn't do the split or it just throws it to the bottom of your inventory or whatever. It's uh, it's very weird. If in any case you're ever unsure about um, uh, your bedroll and everything, you can look at it and it'll show you the information, who it's bound to and who the owner is. But you can simply just press the E button again and it'll say spawn point updated and then you know for sure that it's uh, it's got your back. All right, we have this shredded roast. You can eat the food directly from here without taking it out by just hovering over it. You don't even have to click on it with the left. And just click the right mouse button and it will eat one. You'll see a minus down here in the corner. Uh, we'll take that with us so that we've got some food. We actually had this uh, haunch here. Um, yeah, and we got some things that we don't need until much later in the game, so... Uh, yeah. Uh, you've got sorting options up here. Sort by name. That's probably the easiest and everything's alphabetical. Um, heaviest first, if you're looking to what's taking up all my encumbrance or my weight capacity here, 91% and see what you can get rid of. Um, yeah, and there you go. So, all right. Uh, so what we need to do is let's have a look at our character level and we've got some more, uh, attribute points to spend. Um, let's spend another one in expertise. Let's get it up to this point here where our tools last a little bit longer. And then we'll start investing in some agility and some vitality. Um, also, we have some more knowledge points to spend. And you'll see uh, now that we have Box Maker, that can be unlocked because we had the Construction uh, Apprentice Mason as a prerequisite. Uh, we can now make ourselves a box. Wonderful. Um, let's see. Under Survival, uh, we can also unlock an improved campfire. I'm not going to put one of those down just yet until we've built ourselves up a little housey house. Uh, we can make torches, so I'm going to take that one for a point. Uh, and the bed shaper, which means we can have a permanent residence with a bed where we can respawn at um, uh, as many times as we want. I mean, the uh, the rawhide bed hole uh, roll allows us to uh, respawn as well, but obviously it's not as secure, just lying out here in the sand. Okay, wonderful. So, next steps. Uh, we've got more knowledge points. I suppose we could unlock the stairs. Uh, so probably we'll build a little hut for us to live in uh, at some point soon. But but for now, we're just adventuring. So let's see. Uh, we do have a construction hammer. I like to have that on slot seven. We can put some healing potions actually here in slot two. She will shove some in slot eight as well in case of a panic where you're slamming buttons. Um, and with the construction hammer on your hot bar and taken out, uh, you can see that uh, we can make various things. If we press tab, um, we can see the building pieces that we can create uh, along with the cost of those pieces. So there's how many stones we need and how much wood. So 18 and 3 and how many we've got in our pocket. Um, and it'll give you little numbers here when you can make multiples of the piece you're looking at. Um, then there are crafting stations. So for example, the large campfire we just unlocked is here as a recipe. 50 pieces of wood needed, we only have 30, and 50 pieces of stone, we have 46. So we'd have to collect some wood and stone in order to make the campfire. Uh, then there are decorations uh, with different categories here on the left that you can click through in each of these different menus. Um, and uh, if you only have the base game, by the way, you will see 
uh, a lot less than what's showing here. You'll see sandstone, stone brick, and reinforced stone. And they have much higher building requirements, much more expensive to make. And you've got to do some processing to get there with the resources. Um, if you have the Isle of Sipta um, DLC, then you also see Flotsam and uh, I believe Stormglass. Um, and these other items that you see down here in the list are a mixture of things that I have uh, unlocked in the bazaar or in um, uh, battle passes when that was a thing. Um, um, and also there will be some more available once I unlock higher tier uh, building capability. Okay, so for now, what we really want is a storage box for which we need a um, uh, 100 wood and 12 pieces of twine. Now in our pocket we can make the twine. So we make uh, 10 of those, we'll make 20 of those. There we go. Uh, and then we need 100 pieces of wood. So we press number 3 for my hotbar to get my hatchet out. Come over to these little trees. Give them a bit of a slap. And uh, I think it was 100 wood actually, wasn't it? There we go. Now you can also use your hatchet to gather stone. Like so. Um, but it will be less efficient um, and damage the tool more than if you were say to use the uh, pickaxe um, if you take the pickaxe and use it as an alternate um, implement against a tree you'll see that we're harvesting bark as opposed to branches and wood so depending what resource you want uh, from something and this also can apply to things like bodies of monsters and NPCs that you've taken down as well uh, you might receive some different uh, amounts different quantities or even entirely different types of materials so it's always worth experimenting a little bit and we'll talk a little bit that as we go along through the playthrough okay so we now have enough to create a decoration storage uh, wooden box so we shall put a little wooden box like that on the floor put our hammer away and in here we can for example put our hide away um, also a lot of these arrows because well we don't even have a bow yet um, and some other bits and bobs that are maybe just weighing us down that aren't really uh, directly beneficial to have on us right now I'm going to combine that stack of branches I'm actually going to put half that stack away because it's quite a lot of weight to carry around uh, we don't need these seeds right now although one little tip is we can make with plant fiber um, and seeds if you're short on food or whatever um, you can also make gruel which is what you would feed to your thralls if you were training them, for example, on a wheel of pain. We'll get into that. Um, or, you know, if you just want a snack in your pocket um, that lasts a while, um, it's a pretty good one. You can see that the shredded roast expires in like 20, 30 minutes, whatever the number is. If you take the gruel in your pocket, um, it lasts for an hour and 20, by the looks of it, for a freshly made batch. Yeah, one hour and 20. Um, as opposed to the shredded roast, which if we click on it, yeah, it's 30 minutes. So it's just an example there for normal, again, these are standard spool timers, how long the food might last in your pocket. I can see that our roasted haunch is actually going to run out in 10 minutes, so I'm just going to eat it now. <laughs> um, but there you go. So we can carry a little bit of that with us. And we've got our weight uh, down under control. It probably don't need to carry two water skins with us the whole time. So I'm going to put these seeds away in here. Queen bees, no need to keep those in my pocket. Um, and aloe seeds. Well, I'm just going to use this as a temporary storage area. I like to put like food items into the campfire. And I think, oh, I wonder if I've got any of these seeds or this is the other plant. And I'm like, well, it's probably in my campfire. It's just a little thing of the way I do it. <clears throat> um, also, what we can use um, this box for is we can put some things down in reserve. So should the worst case happen again and we go down, uh, we've got a spare set of tools, spare set of weapons, that kind of thing. Wonderful. All right. So we have kind of like, a, I don't know, you could say a bit of a, a bit of a starter pack, right? In fact, let's do this since we're talking about it. Let's put a little, uh, a little starter set together. Uh, we can make some torches. I'm going to need those anyway for when it's dark, even if the nights are short and not so full of terror. Um, but there you go. So we just got some backup gear and that'll help get us up and running again. Uh, maybe make one more hatchet. Oh, I did make another hatchet. Now I made two of them. Okay. That is how it is. Uh, okay. 
Uh, much later on in the game, we'll have something called a dismantling bench, which will allow us to uh, take some of these things apart uh, and get some materials back from them, but not a thing for now. Marvellous. A new dawn. A new day. Right, let's go get ourselves into more trouble. We need to get some levels here. We need to get some knowledge unlocked. Um, so I think there's uh, there's only one thing for it, right? We gotta we gotta go for it. Uh, we're just gonna spend what we've got here, and uh, yeah, let's see if we can't get ourselves uh, towards a little starter hut and uh, figure out what we're gonna do. As I said, we're gonna go and get some sorcery from up here. Uh, we're going to go and have a fight with a bunch of people down here, but we need to be well prepared for that. Um, and in the meantime, yeah, we'll just go around some of these encampments and go gathering some resources. Let's go have a fight with a crocodile. That seems like a good starting point. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of my playthroughs I've utilized... Uh, okay, I just wanted to check that he didn't have like a, a nasty uh, skull over his head. Oh, I'm dizzy from thirst. Uh, let's have some some water quickly while we're near the water's edge. Um, now, one thing to remember in Conan is you can, if for the most part, uh, always run away from a fight if you need to. You can either trigger them to uh, attack you like that and uh, swing and a miss. Let's see if we can get... There we go. We've got eight stacks of bleed on this guy now, so he's in big trouble. Look at those little ticks of the bleeding. Perfect. And that gained us a level as well. Excellent. Skinning knife. Um, yeah, for the most part, you can run away from pretty much any fight and scenario. So if you do find yourself getting a bit over-adventurous and you've overextended, got yourself into some trouble, uh, never, never, you know, never fret, never be concerned. Just run away best you can. Keep in mind that your stamina isn't going to always allow you to. And climbing up, while it can save you, can also be quite deadly because um, you may be... Oh, hello, who's this fella? Oh, we've got a red-backed one here. I didn't know he lived here, so... Ow! Oh, I thought I uh, was far enough away from his attack, but I wasn't. Okay, I'm going to use my heavy hits again and get stacks of bleed. Oh, we've actually crippled him as well. He's got that... See, that foot thing means that he uh, he can't move as well. Okay, we got him. Okay, I'm going to cut this guy out with some meat for our, with our cleaver. But let's get ourselves... Actually, we've got a lot of hide already. So we'll get two swipes with the cleaver. One swipe with there, a bit more hide. Perfect. Wonderful. Even more hide in, in play. Uh, we got some more savoury flesh so we can cook that up. And let's just grab those. Okay, we can keep the savoury steak on us. That's probably better. Wonderful. Let's see what that level does up towards. We might need a little house soon. Um, I'm going to start putting some points into agility as well. Don't be surprised if I say I'm going to do one thing and then I forget about it and do something else. That's just the way my brain works a lot of the time. So uh, that's good. What's this? This is feral flesh. Let's throw that away for the weight. All right. Good, 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 good. This is going marvelously. And there definitely wasn't another start that went horrendously wrong before. No. Okay. All right. Here we go. We can always gather up a little bit of this aloe. Keep an eye on our carry weight, um, but that's helpful. Plant fiber is going to be helpful. We're always going to need some of that. Um, all right. Uh, let's just tickle this. this one. Ooh, okay, so that last swing there puts the cripple on, and then it can't even keep up with us and just bleeds out. Oh, my goodness, that's nasty, isn't it? All right. Hit more hide. So, because what I'd like to do is make a little bit of armor. Once we get uh, that far into things, let's get some eggs here. Lovely. Love some, love me some fresh eggs. All right. You see the little babies that were there? They've run off. Now, there is also this little island peninsula here. In fact, I think that this could be a nice little spot. We lived here in one of the roleplay playthroughs we were doing uh, with Ulon and Skell, the characters, the two grumpy old men. And I think this would be a nice little spot. Because there's a thrall camp literally just over there by that big tree at the back. And there's just enough space here that we might be able to uh, have a little house. It's got enough terrain available that, that this might work quite well. All right. I'm going to uh, 
put us down a little starter hut here. And uh, yeah, okay, we might as well start it a little bit in the video and then we'll finish it off and come back when it's done, right? So first thing I'm going to do is make a little bit of space here. Just get rid of all these uh, stones. We're gaining some levels quite quickly. Again, I haven't tampered with the levels. It's just that the early game is fairly generous in that regard. Am I hitting that? Oh, it's just a rock on the floor. Okay, there we go. All right, made us a little bit of space. And then let's just see... Uh, yeah, we'll just use some foundations. It doesn't, doesn't, it's not going to hurt too much. Uh, let's see, where do we want to face here? We want to face the Sentinels. This looks quite nice. Hold Shift, raise that up a little bit. And uh, yeah, we'll go with... Uh, I think that looks nice. Right, I'm going to just build the uh, Barden Builds. Trademark tiny house. So we're going to need plenty of materials for that. That means I'm going to go around, slap some stone, slap some trees. Most of these will grow back because Conan's very generous with the uh, the land claims and um, the impact that has to resources. You don't want to build right on top of good resources like iron nodes or <laughs> anything like that. However, overall, the game will be pretty generous with what can grow back near your foundation pieces. That is something you can adjust in the settings as well if you're playing single player or server admin. Um, however, I haven't adjusted them for the purposes of this. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes once we've got this up and running. A few moments later, we've got ourselves a little, uh, a little abode. Yeah. All credit to, uh, oopsie, all credit to Barton Bills, excellent YouTube creator. Uh, with a lot of Conan uh, goodness, and uh, I, I borrowed this one, shall we say, of him uh, quite a while back. It was a little tiny Rohan house. Uh, and uh, I like to use this one quite often because it avoids the trap of falling into building a little box house, you know. Uh, there's a few little tweaks and things. Uh, actually, there's some pieces that I want to put along the bottom. Some uh, foundation uh, pieces to uh, make it look a little bit better. But for that... Uh, oh, here we go. Fence foundation. Actually, I can't do that because I have used the pillar trick there. So that won't work. Okay, I'd have to put that... I can put them under here like that. That makes the, uh, the house look a little bit more stable. There we go. All right, we need to go and get a load more stone. We need to go and get ourselves uh, some more wood uh, and bits and bobs. And of course, we can put some decor and all that. But first things first. Now that we've got a little house, why don't we uh, why don't we go and get ourselves a uh, uh, all of our gear that we left in this box over here? Hopefully, we can carry it all. I don't know. Uh, and we'll make ourselves, uh, will we make a box? Maybe we can pick this one up again, I'm not sure. We can try. Uh, we shall get ourselves a, uh, a box and uh, we can call this our little home. We can also pick up our bedroll and move it across. Uh, and everything's tickety-boo for the next stage, which will be to go and uh, probably have a little bit of a scuffle with the locals and go and start getting ourselves some materials and advancing our knowledge and whatnot. I've uh, leveled up, I think, twice in between, a couple of times. We've put some more into expertise. We're nearly at level five to uh, help our tool durability. Uh, and then we're going to start investing in uh, agility and maybe a little bit of vitality to go with it. Uh, let's see. If we take all of that, are we over cucumbered? No, we are good. Thanks to that expertise. Uh, let's pick up that box. Uh, let's pick up that big bed roll uh, and let's pick up that campfire with everything in it oh my goodness we actually got away with that we have thanks to the expertise we have two kilos to spare isn't that amazing what a happy coincidence okay there's our little house there in the distance looks kind of cute as i said that's kind of my standard little starter house go-to i use in most scenarios because uh, it's pretty much imprinted in the brain now, so it doesn't take too long to build. Uh, I'll include a little, maybe, uh, well, I'll see how the edit goes, but if uh, if it works out well, I'll put a little uh, short time lapse or whatever of uh, building that and putting it together. And you can see a few of the little mistakes or the extra pieces and features that I added in, including the pillar trick with the ladder. Uh, and that might be of interest for people if they're new or they're just looking for some different build inspiration. 
Um, but certainly I would recommend going checking channels out such as Barden Builds, uh, uh, Eradication, and all the well-known ones, uh, Lumia Light and some others. They do some amazing build work and uh, it's a great inspiration uh, for me to follow. Uh, okay, number seven. Let's see if we can get another uh, box back down here first off before we build anything else. Uh, we won't put it by the window. We'll put it here. We'll have this as a little... Actually, we can have a little cooking area there. Let's put this here. Uh, boop. We'll get some better boxes along the way anyway. Um, so again, things that we don't need immediately. Bark, fangs, uh, eggs, hide... A uh, little beetles, some queen bees, some reptile hide, armor kit, uh, bedroll we're going to put down in a moment, uh, spare water skin, uh, some spare wraps. Oh yeah, we had our starter kit. So uh, a hatchet, a pickaxe, spare skinning knife, marvelous, uh, some spare aloes, okay, leather journal. And the scrawled note that we got from the beginning of the game. Future of me, that uh, could be useful later on, but it'll probably expire by the time we get there anyway, so I won't worry too much about it. Uh, a little bit of spare aloe and some aloe seeds in case we want to start growing our own. Um, okay, and I think if we can, you can see that I've got one, one floor piece missing here. I need to go and get some stone for that. Uh, let's put our bedroll down. This can be our little sleeping area here. We'll tidy that up later when we make an actual bed and everything. Um, all right, how are we doing, by the way, in our journey? Okay, we're getting some XP. Uh, we also started the blacksmith journey somehow. I'm not sure. No, we haven't yet. I th oh, I think that's become unlocked because of our level. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, awesome. So some of these things are unlocking as we progress. So warrior dodge, kick, craft a stone club, lock a target onto an enemy. Does that not count as a dodge? And that's a kick. Now, maybe I have to be actually locked in combat to do that. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. We'll learn as we go along. Um, all right. So um, that's got most of our over encumbrance taken care of. Uh, let's see. What do we need if we wanted to build ourselves the cooking recipe? We need uh, 50 stones. All right. That'll fit quite nicely in there. So we'll, we'll kind of just chuck that there. So let's go and get some stones. Uh, all right, some of this stuff is starting to uh, spawn back in, slowly but surely. Uh, and I've been careful, I've avoided getting into a scrap uh, with those folks over there for now. So that's why we can't go and get that big stone over there. We'll get, hey, you know what? Maybe it's time to get into a fight with these people. This is our peninsula. Oh, look, that respawned in as we were picking those... Uh, Fibers, the other plant that we took earlier, respawn back in. Look, you can see this thing starting to respawn actively because we harvested them all at the same time. That's funny. Maybe we can get this one without getting into a fight. Don't worry about the pickaxe sounds over here. Everything's fine. Can I get this one without bothering them? Wow, that's uh, that's impressive. Okay. All right, we even managed to get this bit of wood here as well. Brilliant. Okay, cool. Well, so, oof. Okay, let's, can we fix the floor? Okay, first step. Now, I could do, like, pillars underneath some of these and replace it all with wood, but I thought this would be kind of nice. It's just different um, to look at uh, that as a sort of center line to the building. I don't know. Um, okay, large campfire. Let's see, we can get you in there, boop, like that. Now, I have got the pippy thing installed. Is that going to allow me to... No, I can move it, but I can't resize it. So I need, think I need to change a setting somewhere. You know what? That's wonky. I love it. Perfect. So let's put that in there. That in there. Half of that in there. That way we've got some food to come back to. Um, we probably could keep a, cam a campfire, pocket campfire for now. Uh, let's put some... Oh, actually, no, let's put some... Where's the bark? Barky bark. We can just use that as fuel for now. We're going to use that for other purposes later, so... Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Let's do it the other way. Let's put wood because we'll save that. 
it's more it's more useful for other purposes which we'll learn about shortly uh Allo, we've got a bunch of healing things so we're fine there uh is there anything what we said we would put the food stuff mostly let's put that all into the into here and that way we know when we're looking for foods or medicines we just have to double click on there like that so we'll have a pocket campfire okay good i think we're good all right carrying way too much food basically uh let's put some of these branches away because they're getting quite heavy 14 and a half kilos so we'll put half of those over there like that okay don't even need to carry 60 but it's fine um okay we've got plenty of carry capacity to work with um, we're carrying way too much food, really, realistically. Let's put that gruel away in here because it's quite heavy, I've just noticed. All right. Oh, and also in our box, we had all these arrows before, didn't we? We don't need to carry that many arrows with us. No. Okay. Cool. All right. What is our next step? Next step is to start learning some additional crafting skills. Also, oh, look at this. Perfect. Perfect timing. A thrall taker. So that means... Oh, and armor. Perfect. So our next steps are... We're going... Now that we've got our little housey house set up. Uh, we're going to want to get into some basic blacksmithing, carpentry, uh, tanner work. Um, we're also going to go want to go and get somebody to come and work with us. Uh, to do a lot of the, you know, the carrying, the heavy lifting, the fighting on our behalf. Uh, and therefore we're going to employ some thralls. Um, but let's get ourselves some armor. So in here, now that we've unlocked those additional recipes, we go to crafting station, uh, stations, yeah. And you'll see we've unlocked the carpentry category. So that needs 250 wood and 100 stone to make the carpenter's bench. Uh, for companions, we've got this thrall taker thing. And that's going to need some iron bars, which means we're going to have to get into basic blacksmithing, smelt some iron. Um, which is great because that's going to force us to go out and adventure and look for that iron. We can build a pit of Yog because we picked the Yog uh, uh, religion when we were creating the character just for funsies. So we're not going to shy away from eating, uh, you know, having a nibble on a cooked arm or two. Uh, we So we need to make a furnace. That's 250 additional stone, a tanner's table and a tannery to start making the materials, the ingredients for making some armor. And of course the armor's bench and a blacksmith's bench. Um, the blacksmith's bench needing a uh, furnace uh, uh, for the smelting. So uh, yeah, okay. So armor's bench can be manufactured, carpenter's bench, uh, and the companion thing, that's gonna need the metal. Okay, so we need to go and get some raw iron and uh, some iron ore and some uh, some more lots more stone and we're gonna need some wood as well so yeah let's uh let's go gathering shall we so these thralls here we're gonna try and employ some of them uh to come and work with us um but first things first let's go and gather up all of the stone and uh, wood that we're going to need. I think there's a few crocodiles that live along this embankment and there's a big, big, nasty boss crocodile that lives in an oasis just in there somewhere, I think. So, uh, yeah, let's... Uh, we don't, we're not going to unnecessarily pick fights, but if the fights present themselves, we'll take them if we can and we'll run away if we can. Or, you know, we'll have a dirt nap and have to run back and get all our stuff again. I don't know. But so far, Lucky Hawkins has been doing quite well for himself. Apart from that one little mishap. Okay, we just had a moment here where we were filming and the stone pick broke. So in your inventory, you come in, you can repair, or you can just press the number four on your hotbar. And if you have the resources in your pocket that you need for the repair, uh, it will automatically use them. And the little spinning cogs will appear, like so. Uh, and your tool will be slowly repaired over time. You can see it takes a few a moment. You can, however, preemptively go to, for example, our daggers here. And click repair and again if you have the resources in your pockets is it will do the repair work so it's probably a good idea to get into the habit of checking and repairing all these tools before you head out now uh, we do have some backup blades should things go wrong and we'll put those in slot eight just in case oh and uh, yeah you can always just punch a rock if you're feeling feisty 
Alright, we're gonna get ourselves while well, this is quiet. I thought there might be a bit of trouble here. I know around at that oasis there's really big trouble. Uh, but we're not ready for that yet. Not by quite the stretch. Even if we were reasonably, like, had starter armor and everything, we'd probably still get beaten up and chewed up and eaten. And then we might have problems going back and getting our gear, so... Slowly, slowly, catchy crocky. Uh, I'm gonna need some rock, but we need more stone, I think, than wood. So let's don't we stick with the pickaxe and gathering the rock. Um, but you can see now that the, investing the points into expertise is making a huge difference. So being able to carry 145 uh, kilos or weight, whatever number you want to use, um, is uh, pretty huge for us early game. Uh, you might want to save your points. Um, there is also uh, potions and things you can drink to adjust your character later on. We have the tools uh, to do that as well with the pippy management settings. Um, but we're going to just try and go with this agility oriented build. So starting with some expertise uh, and basic things for survival and, and carry capacity just because it's really convenient for starting. Um, and then we're going to go for not for our usual builder because I'm just role playing kind of thing. We're going to go with uh, an agility build and see with the knives and the uh, and whatnot how we how we get on. Okay, we're over cucumbered. Uh, I really don't enjoy doing the slow walk of shame. So we're just going to split out 50 rocks, chuck them to the floor and run back. Uh, if you are swimming, you can press C to go under the water and space bar to come back up again for air. It can be useful if you want to grab some materials under the water and such. We will have a look at that at some point as well. Uh, we have an extra attribute point, so we're going to put that into expertise. We've got level 5 now. We get our first perk called Survivalist. Tools lose durability half as quickly and hunger and thirst deplete 33% slower. So I think that's a pretty good one for a lot of beginner players. Just to go up to that level whether you go further in that tree that's kind of depends on what your uh, desires are in terms of your build um strength is a good one uh potentially as well because then you'll just simply hit harder um and be able to deal more damage with your combos and things like that so um it'll be good for if you're more inclined to explore and adventure and go in dangerous places you have a much better time uh surviving and well killing stuff off quickly which is kind of the uh, cornerstone of surviving <laughs> a lot, in a lot of cases. Um, okay, let's... Uh, we can unlock iron tools here. Okay, excellent. Uh, and we have no more available points. That's fine. So, now it's going to be a bit tight in here. So what I'm going to do with the crafting stations is we're going to... Um, we're obviously playing on our solo player instance, so we don't have to worry about thievery and uh, that kind of thing. So we're just going to put our... Uh, blacksmithing and all our heat producing uh, goodies uh, out back um, we could put two of these down I often do this and I use one for metal smelting and one for like making firing bricks and stuff but for now just to get going uh, we're just going to throw one down uh, then we're going to need uh, a tanner's table I think that's going to help us uh, so we need to make some more twine Let's see what we've got here fiber-wise, if we've got enough. I don't think we have enough. Okay, so we need to grab some more fibers in order to make the armor's table. So let's grab some more plant fiber. Uh, yeah, so those furnaces, so these are all the very basic for first uh, level, if you will, tier one uh, crafting stations uh, and several of the stations in the game. I would say the majority probably have at least a tier two and some of them have tier three and four um, or whatever the, the you know correct uh, naming convention would be for them um, and uh, they're all fairly straightforward although we will find with Conan that a lot of the times going to something like a Conan fan uh, fandom wiki page and things like that can be very beneficial because whilst like here an initial recipe to make iron bars so put some wood in put some iron ore in press play <laughs> equals iron bars yeah um it won't give you all of the recipes and the things that you can make in here um the game kind of 
has a bit of a mysterious uh, element to it in terms of discovering recipes and working out how to craft things. It's not everybody's bag. Something I, you know, it was one of the things that I struggled with when I first played the game because I was like, "Come on, guys, just give me. You got to give me a better clue, more of a hint." Okay, you can use some intuition or maybe some real world knowledge, um, and put some thought into it. It's cool, but some things are maybe a little bit convoluted and and and, and confusing to uh, to work out. So let's put some wood in there. We don't actually have any iron. I'll give you a good starting example here. If we just put like 50 pieces of stone in there and turn that on oh look it starts making bricks would you have guessed that would you have known that maybe because firing in a kiln i don't know you kind of think of it like that but yeah if you're brand new to the game maybe uh worth just looking on the conan wiki for the one or the other recipe but of course be very careful because if you like me enjoy learning and experiencing things for the first time in games uh, more sort of organically as you go through um, then uh, those kind of wikis are obviously full of easily clickable spoilers you click on a thing oh that looks exciting you click something and then you're like oh now I know all the things it's not quite as exciting uh, to go through the game so you know use with caution uh, again depends on your personal preferences and, and goals for for you know what you're what you're looking to uh, play play through on um, okay, we've got a tanner's table, so we can just throw this down uh, here. That'll do. Um, uh, and this tanner's table allows us to, for example, make uh, plant fibers or make the twine that you need for a lot of building pieces and a lot of uh, processing uh, steps. So we can just chuck a whole lot of fiber in there, use one of these recipes, the one that lit up green there, and just have the table make this twine for us rather than doing everything in our pocket. Um, uh, then that can just help you in terms of if you're doing bulk uh, processing of things, for example. Um, okay, next table that we're going to need as part of this process to get towards uh, making some armor. Oh, sorry. So the other thing uh, that you use the tanning table for is, like earlier, we found those hyena pelts. I think we threw them away because we didn't have enough um, carry weight at the time. Um, but you can take, like, hyena pelts, uh, cat pelts, you know, rhinos, whatever you're running into. In fact, do we have some reptile? I think, oh, there we go. We have some reptile hide. So in itself, not all that useful directly. Maybe there's one or the other niche use for it. You can put it in here uh, and we can just turn that into straight up hides like that. So separate them, the fibers out or whatever, and make these hides. Uh, they in turn can be put on the tannery. So we need some more bark and we need to pick up some more wood. Let's see if our magical trees have come back yet. Uh, not yet. I'm keeping that tree, by the way, because it doesn't quite clip into the house and I think it looks kind of cool. Um, so let's get our pickaxe, because we remember pickaxe gives us bark from a tree. Hit this a few times, and we get ourselves some bark. Nice. Uh, there's another rock respawn here, so... Oh, we've got 900 rock. Okay, we're going to need that. I wonder if I can get to that tree without triggering these, these people. Let's see if we can sneak up on them. Shh. Be very quiet. We're trying to take down trees. <laughs> so much for quiet. All right, we might have enough now for the tannery. No, not quite. Oh, we need oh a bit more, a bit more of the old bark. So number four. Oh no! Oh, we triggered them. Okay, we're in a fight. So I want to try and uh, convince these guys to come and work with us uh, later on. But for now, we're just gonna teach them the error of their ways. Ow! That hurt! Excuse me, madam. So she's just a basic exile. That's like the tier one. You can see the one at the end of her name. So that's the lowest level of fighter or thrall that you'll find. Uh, I don't really want that. Uh oh, I think the other guy goes... Oh, yeah, there's another lady coming for us. Oh, there's more of that. That's unlucky. Um, but that guy was actually a tanner, so ironically, he would have been really, um, helpful for us. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. All of them only had that stuff on them. Wow, that's stingy game. That's some stingy RNG, that is. Um, I think this tanner was 
Oh, it was a level two smelter, my bad. Okay, so he would have helped us with cooking our iron and bricks and things. That would have been, uh, that would have been also quite convenient. Right. Anyway, no point crying over spilt blood, as, as they'd say. Uh, right, okay. So, that's got us a little bit more hide. But now we're in a position where we can get our pick. We can get the rest of the bark we're going to need. So we need 50 to make the tannery. Uh, and then we're going to need some to actually... It's used as a fuel within the tannery. To start making some leathers uh, from which they'll get, we'll gain the byproduct tar as well. Uh, let's see. Did we check what you have? Yeah, you have nothing useful. Okay, so we're just going to skin you as well. Marvelous. All right. Uh, let's grab this tree as well. This will grow back. Okay, a bit more wood, maybe. Marvellous. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's get some more fibres here, because we're going to need a lot of fibres. Building the little housey house took quite a lot of our raw resources, so... Alright, let's drink a potion, actually, while I think of it. There we go. There we go. So we're healing up. Or all healed up, I should say. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Alright. Now, also, sometimes when you're um, excavating the stone like this, you'll get a very small amount of iron. We haven't actually had any iron whatsoever, so sometimes you'll get like one or two pieces out of a rock. Um, we have had no such luck so far, but that's fine. So, we can now make a tannery. Uh, I'm going to just uh, stack these things up kind of along around the size of the house. Tannery would be a stinky process to have indoors anyway. Again, if you're playing on like an official server or even a server with friends or hosted session or whatever, just keep in mind, you know, whether you want to keep everything out in the open or not. Uh, it may or may not be a good idea, uh, depending on the levels of uh, trust. And uh, yeah. Um, okay, so you can see now we put some bark in here. This burns as a fuel in the tannery, and it is turning these hides into leather and tar. Wonderful. So we're gaining leather and tar. Tar we're probably not going to use short term. Um, but I don't know because again some of this I will be learning as we go along too. Um, but we're going to... Uh, we're definitely going to be wanting to use some of the leather. Now, you don't want to necessarily at the beginning turn all of your hides into leather. Because funnily enough, uh, one of the things you'll also learn when we make the armorer's bench for which we need the twine. So maybe this is enough here. Uh, we're also going to want some raw hides because the initial light armors and things that you have access to in the game um, are are using um, are using hides as opposed to uh, the processed leather. So you want to keep hold of some of that stuff in your pocketses. So here we go. Here is the armorer's bench. Let's throw some hides in there. We'll throw a bit of tire and leather just to have it out of our pocket as well. Um, and then let's take a look. So um, the way most of the armors work is if we pick one. I don't know how we want to dress ourselves, actually. Uh, we've got to pick something we can actually uh, make. Oh, I like this these uh, wizard outfits. That could be a bit confusing for this playthrough, though, because I'm playing a different character. So let's go with something else. Um... Let's see. What have we got that's light? We need to find something with light armor. Uh, you know what? I'll keep it simple since we're doing like a beginner friendly. Let's just type in here, search light. And voila. This is the base game that everyone will have access to this. This is the light armor. So what you need, for example, to create this chest piece, chest, chest piece, um, is uh, which has an armor value of 11, uh, are 30 pieces of hide and one light padding if we click on the recipe for light padding uh you'll see that we need twine so again what we were processing in that other table like so uh and then 25 pieces of hide now each of these pieces of armor i believe needs one and the other <laughs> so i uh, a little bit of overlap there rather inconveniently uh we're going to make ourselves a piece of light padding and that will allow us to for example make ourselves a light turban um, that will give us a 6 armor value in a slot that's currently unoccupied, as an example. 
Uh, we were already lucky enough to get those light gauntlets earlier, so we already have that armor value 3. Um, but do pay attention to the values because it might be worth just saving your resources and investing in um, that which gives you the most uh, bang for your buck, as it were, right? So, for example, the chest piece gives you an armor value 11. It's the largest piece of covering armor that we've got. But for that, we need a bit more hide. So we've got two choices. Either we can just make ourselves some better boots or this... This turban. In fact, let's just make the turban just to show you a piece of equipment that we've made. Um, we're going to have to go out and skin a few more crocodiles or shellbacks or, you know, insert whoever here. Uh, again, can right click on it there directly and voila, we have a lovely little hat. Marvelous. We keep the sand out of our hair. Excellent. Our armor value is now 107. Uh, armor weight is shown as medium, by the way. The light, medium, and heavy have different impacts on your mobility versus survivability, shall we say, if you're being struck out. Um, and that's medium. It's based on your heaviest item you're wearing. So we've got medium or the overall rating if you've got two heavies and a couple of mediums and things like that. Um, I believe generally it tips towards the heavier end of the balance. Um, and you can see we've got medium armor rating. Um, this may be good for us or it may limit our movement. Depends again how we like to play and what we enjoy from it. I like light or medium because um, I like a lot of mobility. However, I often end up wearing heavy armor simply because I'm a bit clumsy and I get hit. And it's not very nice getting hit uh, all the time without having decent armor. And those armor values really do stack up quickly and work massively to your advantage if you, uh, if you play it right. So... Uh, we've got some flesh to cook, so let's get that cooked. Lovely. Mmm, delicious. Some ah, fresh arms. Um, I noticed that we need to repair our uh, pick again, so let's uh, just go through while we're there and just do the repair of our tools. Why not? There we go. Uh, oh, we have not enough materials to repair some of these items, like our daggers. We need more twine. So again, we're going to need to gather more fiber and we're going to have to have the fiber turned into twine. So throwing some in here every once in a while. Again, you might not want to do all of it and you'll work this out as you get more familiar with the numbers and and how the game works. Uh, I'm going to drop off another half of our uh, branches. In fact, we might as well drop most of them off. We don't need that many. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to put half a stack of my stones in there as well, just from a weight point of view. We got some spare aloe. Actually, that goes in here, doesn't it? So seeds and aloe. Okay. We've got some more bark that we can put out on the uh, on the tannery. Oh, sorry. Let's actually look at the tannery when we say the word tannery. Bang. There you go. Okay. We might as well put that more bark in there. And here you can see we've made 23 leather. So that's going to come into play when we, for example, make the medium armor. Uh, we should be able to have a quick look at that here. Uh, if we need to make medium armor, then we can just type in here in the search medium. Here's a standard base game armor set for medium. And you can see, look at the armor difference, right? 11 for the light chest piece and 59 for the medium. So there you go. Uh, medium padding takes leather and twine. So in this case, it hasn't been a waste that we've made this other stuff. In fact, we may very well just go immediately to the medium. Um, the other thing to note with armor sets is they often come with a a buff. Uh, not always, but in this case, the light turban that we put on has given us an additional carry capacity of 15. So, it, you know, relative numbers for each of these bigger and smaller pieces. Um, if we went for a full light set, um, that would give us quite a significant buff to our carry weight. So if you were, for example, needing carry weight but not wanting to invest in... Um, expertise here for that carry weight because you wanted to spend your points elsewhere for combat purposes or whatever however you're playing um then you could go for something like a light armor set um or look up on the conan wikis um which sets give which buffs um and then maybe craft in those in those particular directions so um just another handy thing to know when you're brand new to the game right so we're at a point where we need to go and get a load more hide and we need to get some iron. Um, so let's do this. Let's go and find some animals that can give us their hides. I spy with my little eyes like beginning with shellback. <laughs> right, should be a big fella here that'll want a nasty fight with us. 
Right, come on then. Ooh, starts with a big swing at us. I used the right mouse button, uh, and that took us uh, away from the damaging blow. Now, we have a bit of a problem here that they, uh, they both want to have a go. So let's get a bleed on the big fella. That uh, makes things a little bit more uh, stable for us. Uh, and you can see why I want to get into the ability and, and things that are going to give us some stamina. Uh, because, you know, we took a couple of nasty hits there. Again, you probably rapidly become familiar with the animations and where you're locked in and where you're not. And you'll be able to dodge a lot better than me. But in spite of my 800 hours in the game, I'm... Uh, <laughs> I just am not gonna get that good at it, um, but that's fine. I believe there's a crocodile that lives up here. Let's have a little healing potion, because again, I, I look at the bar sometimes. I think that's one of the things that I fall into the trap. I look at the bar and I think, oh, I'm good on health, but it's only 200 points. That is, that, that goes away rapidly. All right, let's get some stacks of bleed on this guy and then roll out of the way of his bite. There we go. Again, we'll hit him with some more stacks of bleed and then just get out of the way and watch him bleed out. Thank you very much, Mr. Crocodile. I need your hide. So again, we're using the skinny knife here, focusing on getting uh, that glorious hide. Uh, we're going to need some more stone and some more wood, I think. So we'll get some of that while we're here too. And we can pick up some more bark with our pick. So again, tools, you know, horses for courses each tool for the specific job or emphasizing let's say what you want the most here this is actually a desert berry plant as well um and these are quite handy because not only can you have them as a quick little snack um but also you will eventually be able to get into things like making some wine so wonderful there we go eat a couple of eggs to go with that lovely some fresh desert berries uh with freshly picked with some eggs lovely freshly pilfered wonderful all right so let's see how much did we get there we got 92 plus what we can strip out from the reptile hide which is at least 38 i think it might be a slightly better than uh one to one ratio um but that's pretty good so that's over another hundred uh, and if we turn some of those into the leathers like i said we can go and invest in um in some medium armor i think we will start to enjoy our uh our fighting our combat encounters a little bit more. I'm just going to get a few more of these berries. Uh, we might be able to get some desert berry seeds as well and plant some of those later on too. Which would look nice near our little house, right? We might end up building another. There we go. We just got some seeds there. It just happened. Okay. Pretty good. Um, there are some hyenas along that way. Um, but hyenas tend to be in packs of like twos and threes and worse if you're running through and accidentally drawing more and more onto you so um yeah be careful with hyenas because they have an interesting attack animation and as a pack it's quite difficult to get with the timing because they often end up at a slight offset angle to each other so when you think you're dodging or blocking maybe you're dodging and blocking one of them but one or two of the others uh still get a, a bite on you and they also have i believe that crippling effect correct me if i'm wrong in the comments um, but the crippling effect means obviously you're slowed down and therefore if you've got low stamina as a low level character uh, plus angry hyenas nipping at your heels yeah guess what no bueno no bueno okay we need a load more of that twine we noticed that as well from the recipes so we're gonna go and grab ourselves uh, a load more fiber while we're here and just get that going in the tannery table uh, and then it'll be time to go out and get some more iron or actually our first uh, bit of iron and get that going because once we get ourselves some better tools guess what things start becoming a lot easier at least on the gathering front <laughs> but trust me we are barely seeing the tip of the iceberg here there is so much depth to this game in terms of the dangerous combat and mysterious places the uh, all sorts to still to discover. Ah, oh, look, these there another set of thralls has moved in. I was going to say they respawn, but I guess that's mechanically what's going on. But I like to think of it in a story way that you know a new set of people have moved in, found themselves a a cheap campfire. They've heard good things about the neighbors. 
Um, okay, so let's put half of these again in here. Like so. Make some more um, leather. In fact, we might need a lot more uh, on there. So I think we're going to go more towards the medium armor. The more I think about it, the more I think that's the right way for me to for me to take this. Because I'm... <clears throat> I am going to get hit. I'm going to get hit. Right. So. Uh, we need some more twine being made. There's 23 more. That's excellent. Let's put at least half more of our fibers. Actually, probably two-thirds of our fibers in there or something. Make a bunch more. Excellent. All right. So look, we're now in a position where we can make two medium paddings. I'm going to make one medium padding. Uh, and then I'm going to use the rest of... We're going to see what goes green in here. But actually, as I said, we'll stick with what's in the base game rather than all these lovely DLCs um, that I've been afforded. Ah, now... Ah, here's a stumbling block. Okay, I didn't pay full attention before. So we also need iron bars in order to make this. And look, oh, coincidentally, we got two pieces of ironstone, uh, which is what it's called in this. Um, so, funnily enough, um, we're going to need to go and harvest that iron if we are going to make that medium armor. So what we could do, and it, now it's kind of good that we did keep uh, this other stuff, is we should probably make uh, some more light armor. And wouldn't you know it, I have messed myself up because I have processed <laughs> all of those hides. Ah, I knew there was something that I was overlooking, but there you go. So, ah, now the good, ah, good news, good news. Hang on, hang on. You're probably thinking, well, what about all those uh, reptilian hides you got before? Yes, excellent, exactly. So, thankfully, <laughs> by hook or by crook, uh, we're going to have enough, once these twines are done, we're going to end up with enough, hopefully, to get at least one more light piece of armor, which will also help us with our carry capacity a uh, short time as well. So while that's cooking, uh, we'll move these things out of the way. I'm just going to put those, actually, I'm going to put them on the armor table, because reasons. Okay, there we go. Uh, some raw meats, let's cook that all up. That'll just last a bit longer. Uh, where did those fangs go? Oh, I did put them there. Okay. Weird. Okay, we'll put them on there because I think there's some. I, it might, I think it's horns, actually. We, we were unlucky before because we. Oh, we've got all that hide we had from before. <gasps> I'm such a bonobo sometimes. I'm so silly. All right, now, never mind. We have all the hide. Okay. There we go. Okay, good. So, light padding. We want to create, so we want to create, I think, four more. No, we've got one hat. We've got the medium gloves already. So the apron is, this is just cosmetic. So we need a medium, a middle, um, oh, sorry, a body, a torso piece, a leggings piece, and a foot reps piece. So we're going to need at least three of these light uh, pieces here. And then hopefully now we'll have enough to make light chest piece. One. Then we need some shoes, two, uh, and we need something for below the waist, or the waist and below. So you can see these all in the queue. Now this table, I think it's one of the only ones, sometimes kind of this weird behavior where you come away from the bench thinking, oh, it's going to just make that queue. And sometimes the queue will clear down. I think that typically happens when you're, unless they fixed it, when you're making an item, but it was missing a prerequisite, but the resources were available. So it'll say it'll make the prerequisite and then it'll make the piece of armor. And sometimes when you go away, the queue clears down and it only makes the padding. So yeah, if you see that, that's just a bug. It can happen sometimes. Okay, there we go. There's our old gear, including that cool apron that we had. And now, oh, now look, Lucky Hawkins, hello there. It's starting to look like a proper adventurer. You can see that we've got our armor score has gone to 125 now. So it hasn't gone up that much, even though we put a lot of pieces on, because these are all individually not very much in terms of armor. However, they've all got some carry capacity, 15. 
15 15 and the medium piece that we've got oh coincidentally is giving carry capacity as well maybe that's uh how it's set so now our carry capacity is 220 that's fantastic because we're gonna put that down we're gonna go and get a load of heavy stuff so that's that's phenomenal that's really good okay so uh let's see if i grab some twine i should be able to repair my my weapons here uh oh we just put the stone away okay let's grab the stone hello boxy box i tend to just grab all of it it's just you know my habit uh there we go let's repair these other ones because we're going to go a little bit further let's make sure our pick is fully repaired and our hatchet there we go that's pretty good and we'll, i think we'll actually will take a little bit of stone with us so uh let's grab some of this this is take i mean i know we'll grab some while we're out and about anyway but okay right i'm gonna put the rest of the twine on here because we'll want that for when we're getting busy later okay good 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 so we've got our first two pieces of iron stone there we can cook that and you'll see it's a two to one ratio so two of those so one piece of wood two pieces of iron stone equal press three for play equals an iron ingot there you go oh that used to be a reward when you made your first iron bar anyway okay looking at the journey we're doing quite well we need to heal ourselves uh, I thought we already did that. Let's use a wrap. Does that count? No, it won't do it because we're fully healed right now. Okay. Uh, what else do we need to do? Harvest meat from a corpse. Refill your water skin and unlock primitive cooking knowledge. Uh, from the knowledge menu. Uh, okay. I would have thought we had that already. Hmm. That's weird. I feel like that's almost missing something out. Uh, for us <clears throat> okay not going to worry about that uh let's fill a water skin because i'm pretty sure we already had done that no let's see that's not giving us a reward is it because it wants it to be on our hot bar when we do it hmm i don't know no it's not taking it okay don't know not to worry. Okay, attributes. Now we're going to start investing in... I think we'll go agility. Increasing our stamina pool and things like that. It's going to be very handy to run away. So now we're going to go on the hunt for some iron. And rather than kind of look it up or whatever, I'm, I know that there's some spots. But we're just going to go for a bit of a run around. See, uh, see what we run into. There should actually be some iron. I believe up here where we might also run into some hyenas. So you know those hyenas I told you to avoid at all costs? Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, can you see that in the distance there between the trees? That is a big boss crocodile. And he is nasty. He's got this animation and when he kind of locks you, locks it in and gets you with it, no bueno. So, yeah, we're not ready to fight that guy yet. We're not ready yet. So, sometimes there's hyenas up here. I know there's some down below us. Um, but there should be... Is there a bit of iron here? Okay, yes. Here we go. There's the mine. That's what the iron looks like. So, there we go. We've got 18 pieces of iron. So, not a lot. Uh, we're just going to have to keep looking. Uh, I think there's also a hyena pupper down there too. Uh-oh, they saw me. Uh-oh, run away. Uh, I don't really want to fight them if I can avoid it. I am, however, probably ending up in an area where there's going to be more. Oh, sugar! One of them made it already. Okay, let's have a little bit of fight. Oh, did you see how it got me there? That wasn't fair. That was that was some sort of animation glitch because... Oh, look at my health go down! Oh no, run the way! Okay, I think we got so far away from their spawn, spawn point that they actually gave up and ran off. Oh. Okay, I could be wrong. I, I am wrong. There's two of them in a bush over there, but they weren't visible before. Oh, one of them's nearly... Oh, okay. Have it then. But yeah, you can see... Okay, you can see with the animations it's a bit off. 
And so much for my better stamina pool, man. What the heck? Can I get a bleed on this guy? Okay. <laughs> that was close. Let's skin him because we're going to need those hides. Oh, yeah. So about that avoiding the hyenas thing. Now you know. If you didn't know, now you know. Okay. Leveled up though. Uh, maybe we should get that passive heal thing going. <laughs> <laughs> let's start let's start investing in our health pool and get our health pool up okay now that we're out of combat and it's relatively safe we can heal ourselves oh there we go we got the journey step now cool so i used a rough wrap and again don't move to let the animation go to its full completion and there we go we're nearly full health 205 so not quite let's use another one i want that full health there we go 220 done perfect all right yeah remember at the moment we're using stone tools we're also using stone weapons and we're using light armor there's another hyena just chilling over there waiting for us um, and the place to find iron is often on like little corners like this where there's clusters of stone and sometimes there'll be you'll see the lovely blue silvery uh, iron listed in there something's got agitated oh here they come Two more hyenas. Okay, but we managed to back away just in time, so that's good. Mm -hmm. I wonder, there is a way to turn that pippy notification message thing off, but I can't remember what it is. We'll get there. If you know, let me know. Are you an angry deer or are you just, you're just a normal deer? Okay. Uh, let's go up here. Now, one thing, sort of a general rule of thumb. You've got the noob river and the new the sort of starting area the, until about here and then it gets more dangerous the more you head in like over here up here da even down here further away from the river and especially as you go through here in here absolutely deadly um and and up here all of this stuff really really dangerous <laughs> so it's called Noob River, or you could call it Newbie River if you wanted to phrase it a bit more friendly. Um, yeah. Don't just, you know, again, you've got the ability to run away from most things. But remember, at the beginning, you've got very low stamina. And creatures will potentially be fast enough or even just deadly enough if they catch you. Like one hit. Um, could be enough. Or they might put a cripple on you that kind of thing so let's just have a look around see if we can find some uh some iron uh there's a guy that will give us some nice i think it's exquisite meat maybe if we cut him up uh you can eat like better foods and stuff for more sustained buffs and that kind of thing so there's 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 the ways of mitigating and then advancing and pushing the limits in certain ways again i'm not an expert this is not meant to be a like completion type guide this is just uh yeah if you want to come into conan and maybe struggling to get your first uh few moves or pieces of armor or whatever under your belt uh this is uh how you can go about it see right no iron along here i think we might have to go up uh up the top but again we're going into more dangerous areas you know, oh, I know where there's a pocket of iron, actually. Oh, right here. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, usually what we're looking for are, like, these clusters, but coincidentally, I never knew this one was here, and we just ran into this. There's only three nodes, but, you know, one of them was a little bit bigger. In fact, was there two there? Maybe. Sometimes something might be glitched in the ground. Uh, all right. Well, that's not bad. That's a start. That's 90, so 45 uh, iron ingots plus the one. So that would get us either... Well, I think the better thing to do would be to invest maybe in some weaponry and some, some tooling. Because the better tools will not only last longer, but get you uh, more from the harvest. <laughs> Let's uh, jump down here. When you jump off a ledge, if you're near to 
uh, a cliff edge, except for in a few specific circumstances, uh, you'll be able to grab onto the wall by pressing the space bar again when you're pressed up against it, uh, and it will slide you down a certain amount of way. And then you can either climb at the cost of stamina, uh, or you can... Uh, let's get our torch out here so we can see. Uh, or you can press C, crouch key, if you've got that map too. Um, and uh, that will let, let go your grip on the rock and you will start falling again. Um, actually falling down and then pressing space again, pushing into the wall to grab on again with the slide effect um, can be a really good way to get down from you know quite a high place if you're on a, a, a tall kind of hill or whatever. However, be mindful there is a sliding effect based on how far you've sort of slid down. So keep in mind that you could still keep sliding and therefore still suffer the consequences. Oh, that was an obvious one and I should have I mistimed my movement. But I'm not having any of this guy's nonsense. Oh, hello. Who are you, Mr. Croc? Who brought you into this fight? Oh, they're over there fighting each other. I might take on the winner. I will take on the winner. Okay, perfect. It's you, Mr. Croc. Here, have some bleeding goodness. Oh, he uh, he's biting the tree, so I'll take that. Perfect. Okay, let's get some skinning done. Gonna need all those hides. Harvest some meat. There we go. Number six here. Let's get some... Uh, some, oh, we've got a head. Okay, we've got a decorative head. And we can you learn a skill to put that up as a decoration. Okay, and in the meantime, the night has passed. That's great. So I've got the night time passing on times three, so that feels comfortable to me. Oh, there was a little bit more iron there. Wonderful. There's an encampment. Oh, and I know this area well because I usually build my starter hut just up there. Past the second, I think, waterfall. Um, but yeah, there'd be some uh, some locals there that we could have a fight with. In fact, maybe. Oh, I've got an idea. You know, we've got nicer armor though, but we might be lucky we might get something off them. Like a medium piece that we got before. Let's go and give them a tickle. And run away if it gets too, uh, too airy. Hello. There's another bit of iron there as well, so. Let's see if we can get... I think the two of them was going to attack out of the three. Yeah. One of them's got an arrow, so... Uh, or a bow. Oh, hello. He went away. Ow! You son of a biscuit. Ah! Ah! Run away! <laughs> okay, healing potion. Alright, back into the fight. Okay, so they usually go for a bit of a swing like that. Not necessarily a, a full-on... Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I got lucky there. I got really lucky. Pop a heal. Roll. Combat roll. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay. So let him swing. Ow! Oh, I didn't time it. Okay. Yeah, you... Yeah, that's what you get. Picking on me. That's what you get picking on Lucky Hawkins. I'll skin you as well. Actually, what do you got on you? You just got... What's going on with all their loot? They just got arrows. I hope that's not something that's broken because of uh, the mod I've got or something. That's weird to see them just dropping arrows all the time. Seems quite bizarre. Oh, no, this one dropped a foul cutter. Okay, so there's a decent weapon with a cripple to it for reusing swords. Um, there's also a box here. Ah, some healing, some twine, some wraps, a bedroll, and a sealed water skin. Nice. All right. Again, when you're at the beginning like this, even little bits of loot like that can be uh, super handy. Uh, wonderful. Oh, now I know a place over there. There's a load more iron. Will we get murderized? Okay just pop back into my memory there for a moment that there's a uh, we can avoid all the crocodiles and I believe there's another emote or something that we can learn I 
just can't remember whether there's a nasty fight here too. Well, let's go and see, shall we? What's the worst that can happen? Up here by this broken bridge on this end, there's a bunch of iron and there are some ghosts to follow. It's part of the lore and myths in the land. Here, look, if you hear that sound, there, you can follow the animations and they usually lead you to something that's either a resource or some knowledge you can learn. Here, press to interact. And there's a book on the floor, you see it? Look at that. Orphirian Journal number three. We've learned a new emote submissive. It has proven wise to travel together. My companion has crafted a crude stone sword, one which he applied with great strength to an aggressive crocodile. I cowered in fear when the monster attacked and I am thankful to my companion for both the protection and the sustenance the flesh of the beast provided. It tasted like chicken. We have decided to venture further north following the river. My companion has taken an interest in the black walls of the ruined city. I am less enthusiastic about the prospects of a safe haven there. Brilliant. So there's a journal going on and that's number three. So more story to be had. And this is just a really, really little tiny peek at how much lore and fun storytelling there is in this game. Uh, it's amazing. Let's have a look at this new emote we've just learned, shall we? We hold the R, but oh no, we can't emote for some reason. That's weird. Hmm, I wonder what that is then. Oh, is that because we had our weapon uh, a tool drawn, maybe? Yes, okay, it was. So we've now got, I think, on the, on the conversation, we've got polite clap. The one that we learned earlier. Like that. Looks fantastic. Uh, and then we've got... I don't know where the other one would be. Expression. Angry, terrified, scared, thoughtful, submissive. Here we go. Oh. Oh, woe is me. <laughs> For I only have light armor. All right. Awesome. There you go. Super fun. Obviously, for role-playing, you can have tons of fun with the emotes. Um, but yeah, there's this little bit of iron here that I remembered. Uh, let's head back and get that iron cooked up. Wonderful. All right, took a bit of a tumble there, so... Don't want to make any silly mistakes. We've got a shell back head. All right, all bandaged up. Heading home. So again, if I look now on the map, we can see that's where our current bedroll is, our active bedroll. So an easy indicator and guide to get back to uh, relative safety and comfort. Um, there's another place here with exiles, but there's often a crocodile and they're usually having a fight with each other. That's why everything's dead. Oh, we found an impaled skull. Let's take it. Uh, I'm going to take those and then just drop them because I think that will reset that box better. All right, and somewhere along that beach, there's often a very strong warrior. But again, somebody... Oh, there they are over there. Not somebody that we're in a good position to fight right now. They'd probably just kick our butts. Um, and the good thing is it also alternates a bit. I think a lot of the places have one or two different spawns or, or NPCs. So you might get a different person. Uh, so if you ever see a thing and you're like, oh, I saw this on Grumble's video, but for some reason when he was there with Lucky, he got a different fighter or a different... Uh, NPC, yeah, they, they kind of alternate a little bit in a few of the spots. I don't know how much of that is true across all of the map, but sometimes there'll be a fighting lady, sometimes a guy there. Could be all sorts of different things. And the same similar is true of the thrall camps um, that we see, like the little encampment here with the three people. We saw that tier two smelter before. Next time there might be a dancer, there might be a fighter, an archer, you know, all sorts of things. So... Um, they just rotate around and we'll learn more about that as we get further into the playthrough but again there's there's way more informative videos and information out there than I could offer because uh, people simply have a deeper knowledge and more experience of the game than, than what I can offer you all right some of these uh, trees and rocks have respawned in the meantime that's great uh, let's put look at that 222 ironstone we got there so let's press play on there and start cooking those up. Perfect. That's going to give us 110 plus the 111 iron bars. 
Uh, so we can start looking at uh, what that's going to mean in terms of making a blacksmith. Uh, we also got a bit of uh, decor, an impaled skull. I mean, who doesn't need an impaled skull as a welcoming, uh, a welcome mat? Look at that. Lovely. What could be more welcoming? Fantastic. All right. So, oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's a torch because I moved my construction hammer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's have a look. So to make the blacksmith's bench, which is where we're going to make our weapons, uh, we need uh, 50 of those iron bars. So it's quite expensive early on. Like eventually we'll have enough that it won't, uh, it might, won't matter so much. It won't be so challenging. Um, but for the time being, that would be 50 of those. We'd need another 50 if we wanted to make the Wheel of Pain to try and get some companions to work with us. So I think we'll skip that. We'll forego that for now. Uh, 250 wood and 100, and 100 stone to make the carpenter's bench. Okay, so we could get that going. The carpenter's bench, because I believe we would have enough here. Yeah, okay. So let's put a carpenter's bench. Actually, wait, let's... The blacksmith is definitely the priority. So maybe we uh, do that first. <laughs> All right, that's cooking. So let's get some more stone. We're going to need it. So we should have enough materials to put the carpenter's bench down. I might put that outside because it's pretty, uh, pretty, well, it's not so much the size of the carpentry bench. It's just that it's got this awkward L shape. So I think we're going to just, uh, put that down in our sort of working area here as well. Why not? Like so. Uh, and if we have a look in here, we can make some bows. But the main thing is you want this shaped wood. So we put some normal wood in here. Let's just put like 150 pieces. Uh, make some of the shaped wood because we're probably going to need that potentially. For the iron tools, it'll probably be more like branches and stuff. But we, it doesn't hurt to have some of that prepared because it takes, as you can see, a little bit of time to process. So we get some of that running. Um, and here you can see branches and twine. We'd be able to make ourselves quite a nice bow. Uh, although health damage is only six with these bows. So seven for that one there, the tavern guard bow. Um, branches and twine, yeah. So they're not all that good, but if you need to hit some people from from range, stay out of trouble, get yourself up on a rock or something, uh, could be good. Could be handy. Uh, so that was branches and twine, our old friend twine. Let's make some more twine. We have a little bit in our pocket. So you can see that the early game is, as you'd probably expect, a little bit of juggling of resources. There's a bit of overlap um, in some of these things. Not unreasonably. So you might find yourself, like, borrowing from the one pocket and putting it back in the other and so forth. A bit of that going on, yeah. Um, okay. So, nevertheless, uh, here we go. Let's make ourselves a bow while we're kind of thinking about it. Put some branches in here. Maybe put 50 in there. Uh, let's put some twine in here. Maybe here. Half of that. Give that. Uh, let's make ourselves this cavern, tavern guard bow because, you know, it's got one extra uh, damage versus the others. So why not? Uh, if you don't have access to that, don't worry about it. A lot of these are probably from the, the DLC. I'm not sure which one's like the basic uh bow base game bow but we should have that unlocked because we did take the bowman thing before uh there we go we now have a bow uh okay and with this if you hold the control key while you're aiming that's your your strong shot uh oh wait no ammo so we have to drag in this case we have these bone arrows we've been picking up from people from there and then that gives you a bit of an aim, but it costs stamina. But look at the hit. Pretty good, huh? So that guy's down. Now we just have to uh, do some dodging. Oh, how did that miss? That, that felt wrong. Yeah. 
Oops. My bad. Okay. Oh, right through the face? And, oh, the ear. I killed him with a shot to the earring. Wow, that's... uh. Yeah, that happened. Okay. We'll get some more hide. Don't worry about the human hide that we're using for our armor. It's fine. It's fine. So we killed... Oh, we actually got some cool, some armors. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, hello. Timing is everything. Grumbles. Lucky. So unfortunately my, uh, <laughs> my stamina is still far too low. So when I'm doing all these dodging maneuvers, it's taking a lot. Oh, it's a stone skinning knife that I was hoping it was going to give us a good one, but no such luck. Okay. Because sometimes you can get really lucky. Not so much with these lower thralls, but as you go through the game, you'll see it's really worth stopping and, uh, grabbing these, attacking these camps early on because you could get yourself either some nice piece of armor or some cool decor items or some cool tools, weapons, you know, like we saw here. We already got this Falcata. Um, so we have in th actually... A, you know, a weapon we could probably use already ourselves. Uh, this got armor value 8, and this gives you plus 20 health, this dancer's outfit. So it's got the same armor value. Instead of carry capacity, this would give us bonus health. So I think we're going to wear that. Dancer's outfit is also plus health. Um, yeah, why not? And now we're over encumbered because we don't have the weight benefit anymore. Isn't that funny? Okay. So our carry capacity went down to 190 from the 220 we'd been enjoying as, as pure luxury. Uh, dancers bracelets. Okay. Okay, that one was too much. Okay, let's see. So our armor score is 100. It all goes back down to light. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our encumbrance outfit for now. Maybe the skirt. We'll take the skirt. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Marvelous. Okay, looking in here, we've got 108 of our iron. Um, so that means we would have enough to make the... And what I would strongly recommend is to prioritize uh, getting your blacksmith blacksmithing bench uh, put down. We're going to lay this down in like a little, little deliberate area like this. So it looks like it's a little, you know, working at the forge, working here. Uh, we're going to throw those down on there. We're going to throw some branches in because that's what we're going to need for this early game stuff. Uh, we can put some of our other armor pieces that we're not wearing right now in here. We could also put them on the armor stripe. Uh, I'm going to put the shell back head there because there's no need to carry that around everywhere. Uh, and let's have a look. Look at this. We've got uh, all sorts of... Because I've been fortunate enough to get lots of DLC, I've bought a couple myself and I've had people gift them to me as well. Uh, we've ended up with a whole bunch of uh, weaponry down here that's probably won't be visible to you if you're playing just the base game. So I'm going to look uh, up here. You can select which DLC by name you're looking for. If you're looking for specific items from DLCs that you own. Or you can click none and this will show you only what you have in the base game. <clears throat> so note we've got Iron Hatchet. Iron Pick and Iron Sickle because we unlocked, in fact, that one's quite a priority because that's a lot of fiber, easy gathering. Um, but we haven't yet, with our knowledge, unlocked under weapons uh, any of the iron variants. So we're going to go to our daggers and then looking in here, look, Iron Poniard is the one you want. I'm not sure what Iron Punching Daggers is. What the difference? Um, they look cooler, uh, but I don't know. It doesn't give you the values, so let's just unlock uh, these iron poniards for now. Oh, and this is our first sandstorm. Look at that. So if you're down in these desert areas, you are subject to the sandstorm. They don't affect areas much further to the north and the jungle. So what you have to do is you have to go and find shelter, otherwise you will take damage. Uh, which it will show you. So it shows on the screen there on the top left that there's a th sandstorm running. Um, but we're not taking damage because we're in a shelter. Uh, as denoted by the little house icon, which is showing 80%. 
Which, to be honest, is a bit disappointing. If we go by the window... Oh, look, it's 100% in the middle of the house. So here I got 100% coverage. Here I've only got 80 or something. It changed before. 60, look. And if I stand by the window, you can see I'm actually taking health damage. And quite significant health damage at that. So yeah, this tiny house, I don't know if it's because of the different pieces I've used or because they're just tier one uh, building pieces, but for some reason we take taking, it's not counting as 100% house coverage. So <laughs> take that for what you will. Maybe that's my bad building skills, but I think that's just a peculiarity of the uh, of the game at this point with these window pieces. So not really i'm not i usually build this out of better materials so that's possibly what that is all right let's cook up some more food uh all this flesh uh we've got these hyena hides so we spoke about that earlier we can put those on there and strip those down to make more hides for armor uh processing that's cool <clears throat> we've also got some more twine that's been made for us so that's handy uh, and now that we've unlocked all, we have to wait for this sandstorm to pass, really. It shouldn't last too long. Uh, you can survive the sandstorm a little bit if you're caught out in the wild. But what you typically need to do is, like there, just go and look for some stone and stuff. And hopefully there isn't a big crocodile hiding under a rock there waiting to eat you. Um, and just kind of find a spot and crouch down. Look for um, the game to tell you that you're getting shelter. Now, I have this advanced UI thing mod on. So I'm seeing that little number with the little house there at the top. Um, you will see a more simplistic house symbol and it'll tell you, like, it'll give you a, 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 an indication of whether you're getting enough shelter or insufficient shelter. Um, but yeah, things th those are some of the things that are a little bit more intuitive in terms of the symbols and the information you're getting from the base game UI. Um, maybe understanding how to get shelter away from the stone isn't as obvious as it could be. Okay, let's have a look on here. Now that we have our nun selected up here, uh, and we've unlocked those uh, poniards, we have them available. They do a health damage of 11. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, craft those up. Uh, and then, oh, I was hoping I would have enough metal. I think it's still in the smelter or some. Uh, that we would have enough for an iron pick. Because, funnily enough, if we make the pick, then we will have... Uh, the ability to harvest more iron, also with more durability for the tool, um, and therefore uh, we will uh, be able to kind of just speed up the process a little bit. Um, let's see. Oh, we got, I think, just enough to make one more tool. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to go for the iron pick because then we can get more iron. And then we can make up the rest of the iron tools and start progressing further into the game. Wonderful. All right, we're off to a pretty good start so far, I would say. Okay. So let's uh, empty our pockets out a bit. And uh, yeah, time for more adventuring. We might as well just throw all of this in there. Uh, we got some reptile hides that we can break down. All right, and now we're kind of well into the basic game loop. Good fun. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Let me know in the comments what you think, uh, whether it's helpful enough, you know, for beginners in particular, or for people who just need a refresher or just want to see, like, how does someone else go about playing the game, maybe. There's some different tips and tricks sharing going on. Uh, let me know what you think. And I will go out and get some more uh, resources and we will reconvene when we're ready for the next steps. Alrighty, we're back. Uh, I have been out, gathered another round of iron and some other resources up and we should have enough iron bars now to make ourselves a, uh, a little cheeky little wheel of pain. Uh, we've also got all the iron tools still to make for ourselves, a sickle, a uh, hatchet, um, but these uh, these new daggers of ours have come in uh, pretty handy. Um, so I figured, why don't we uh, see if we can get some of these locals to uh, come join our cause, as it were, uh, by putting up a uh, companion wheel of a lesser wheel of pain, which allows us to do 
uh, only one at a time. Uh, we've had a couple of levels uh, that we've increased just from the harvesting and whatnot and the harvesting with the uh, iron pick uh, that we made uh, has really, really uh, been a big boon for us. We came back with about 450 metal from uh, essentially the same run that we made the previous time. So uh, just shows how much more effective that is. Um, so uh, let us uh, let's crack on and make one of those. Uh, wheels of pain. I can't remember what buttons I was pressing. So, one of these, lesser wheel of pain, 200 wood, 200 stone, and 50 uh, doobly doos. Let's see if we get that set to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so, bunch of those. That's 82. That's great. And in our little box here, believe it or not, we actually have all the wood and stuff. So that's too that's that's i've over overburdened myself now haven't i all right let's put that back in there there we go all right number seven so overlapping with okay there we go now i might make a little uh staging area around here for all these bits and bobs for the sake of uh just being a beginner kind of course and uh starting out uh, we have this thing, the Wheel of Pain, the Lesser Wheel of Pain. Uh, I actually got a truncheon from one of the people that we beat up earlier. So, pure coincidence, they ended up giving us one of the tools we needed. So, we'll see, that's a one-handed weapon. Uh, and it's concussive blows, so designed to knock people out, smack them in the head, knock them unconscious. Now, the trick here, or one of the tricks, I would say, is... Um, really or what's beneficial is to have a shield if especially if you're going up against multiples um so we might actually make ourselves not the bone shield a little one out of wood here um and just do a bit of sword and board i'm not gonna do anything super special uh just for the purposes of uh of being able to protect ourselves so right mouse button held uh, and there is sometimes a bit of a timing thing to it uh just get the uh, shield out in front and that'll block a lot of things so you've got to be careful if they come with a big hammer uh, or a pike, something like that. There might be something that does shield penetration. Um, but let's see if we can't knock out one or the other of these uh, folks here. Enemies approaching. Uh, this is just to get somebody on our team. Uh, okay, they, they, they. Okay, this is, this is, uh, yeah, you can see the, de so the little grayish, bluey bar that appears uh, denotes their level of consciousness now i'm going to take my knives out and i'm gonna i see that a couple of these are just basic exiles not up to very much so i'm not interested in them so we'll take them out quickly and you can see immediately as i mentioned before how uh deadly uh this uh new set of daggers is like come on you're all coming to join the lucky farm so you just keep hitting them until they pass out. Oh, he's reset for some reason. So we're going to follow him and hope uh, that we can get the job done this time. Dodge that big swing from him. Uh, using my control key, my, my power hit for a bit more of... Uh, oh, watch out for his double swing there. And then keep going. No, no, dodge. I got crippled, so I'm slower moving. Okay, there we go. We just have to get in range. And there we go. High Kirkanian Blacksmith, level 2. And he's now unconscious on the floor. Now, of course, the other thing I should have made before I got into this, but I got too excited, uh, is we need a binding. So there we go. That's one of those made. I had to sneeze there. We put that on our hot bar. And then, with our binding uh, out, number 5... Uh, we go over them and you can see here blacksmith level 2 or tier 2 and he's unconscious if we press E He's now bound and we can drag him around and quite hilarious you drag him through mountains and falling off cliff edges and Somehow the power of the bind is uh, keeping him safe and secure uh, He could wake up. So if you're on a really really long trek across the map, uh, he might Regain consciousness in which case he would be angry with you and try to fight you again um, but essentially, like here, the trek is not that much of a long one. So you bring them over to your Wheel of Pain, you open the Wheel of Pain, and it automatically goes from being bound to popping into the box here. So that's the first stage done. This lesser Wheel of Pain can only take uh, one at a time. So uh, what we do now is, remember I mentioned earlier that Gruul is the 
food of choice for such followers. Oh, that one's spoiled. Uh, we come and get our gruel here, 35. I don't know how many we'll need. Hopefully this will go nice and quick because of the server settings. And you can see he's out here on the Wheel of Pain. But he won't do anything until we put the gruel in and feed him. Uh, and then he starts turning away and probably huffing and puffing and wheezing and moaning as part of the process. But it's just a re-education. Um, there we go. That's actually converting quite quickly because he's only a tier 2. Uh, so it won't take that long and we have the settings... Uh, tuned up a little bit yeah there you can see the little white bar there in the bottom right lovely uh yeah and he's just gonna uh, happily merrily eat that gruel whilst pushing around 41 minutes of burn time from that uh, 35 pot of gruel again depending on your server settings or your, your own player solo play settings uh, that might vary a little bit um but yeah pretty uh pretty nifty little job there let's have a little potion heal ourselves back up again Okay, let's double check if we've left anything uh, decent on these. Uh, stone, some bone arrows, not really. I'm getting so many of those arrows and even worth gathering up. Um, I did check incidentally on some of the others that I've put down elsewhere while I was out gathering iron. Uh, they were giving us some better results in terms of uh, in terms of the loot. So I think it's just a RNG coincidence that we're getting a lot of arrows. <laughs> we're, we're not going to get too paranoid yet. Um, but there you go. That is how to go and get yourself some thralls, get yourself going. Now, once you get the slightly bigger Wheel of Pain, you're able to uh, uh, take uh, a couple more of those at a time. Um, and... I think in this case, even though it's a massive box, I'm not, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I don't think you can actually put more than one in there, so it, it won't process them. Um, but if you uh, have the bigger wheels, then you can obviously do more. Uh, and you can also find a special thralls out in the world called Taskmasters, and they will behave in a fashion which gives a buff to the amount of time it takes here, so decreasing the time, in other words. Um, and, uh, uh, yes, various other speciality uh, capabilities um and once we level up a little bit further there will be larger wheels we can unlock there will be something called a torturous table uh, which allows us to make better truncheons uh, than the one we had and again we, we can make those basic truncheons uh, you'll see that they take a bit of durability damage already just from trying to knock out those couple of people there the bind these fiber bindings don't last that long either so you, you know this is really your your starter pack and uh what you can do is make yourself a couple of these so you can see that it needs a bit of leather, a bit of fiber, and a bit of branch. Um, and uh, typically what I would do, what I recommend, is make two or three of the bindings. Uh, make two truncheons, for example, uh, and then have at it. Uh, now, in the Age of Heroes, which is what we're in now, the new, new release, um, there have been some quite significant changes, some of which have had to be uh, deactivated again uh, with a patch for now. Uh, because of some bugs with them um, but your thralls now behave in a slightly different way than they used to you're able to uh, dress them up put armor on them and stuff like that and all of the thralls can be are, are placeable or, or need to be placed out in the world now um, and will then perform their functions by just walking around and being in the vicinity of your settlement they will apply their buffs to any relevant tables actually not just one at a time so it's quite a significant change arguably an improvement i think but course they need to get rid of all the bugs and that and eventually when they have living settlements feature reactivated and hopefully bug fixed uh they'll be able to wander around and, and make it look like a really living breathing settlement so that's gonna be pretty cool i look forward to being able to build a village at some point with them all kind of going to and fro from the blacksmith going to the blacksmith's workshop and all that kind of thing should be awesome all right so here we see that this has finished processing uh so it goes back into that pot there uh, we then take this guy into our inventory, uh, put him on our hot bar somewhere. I'm going to, well, actually, we can leave the gruel there because we don't actually have any ice box or whatever. Uh, that stuff will probably just expire, unfortunately. Um, but then we press number seven, and hey, presto, we drop this guy into the world. Uh, he goes into a state of guarding. We can see his health, uh, thanks to the uh, UI mod that we're running. And uh, yeah, he's off. He's actually going to walk over here and start doing some work. Uh, interestingly, I don't know if that means that the Living Settlements isn't disabled on my solo gameplay or something at the moment. I'm not sure. I think it's only disabled for servers, perhaps. So, there you go. Um, now, here, as you see, you can change all of his armor and that. His current armor rating is 5. Um, so, we're going to go and get that uh, 
some of that dancer gear and everything just to improve his armor so he can defend himself if anybody comes near the base. Uh, he's got a two-handed stone sword, so not the best. Uh, and also down here uh, is important. He has combat tactic. You typically want to leave that on chase, uh, the other two being less useful. Uh, follow behavior is defensive. So will he attack first if you see enemies or enemies come to aggro on you? Or does he wait for you to be hit or engaged with? It should be really if they're engaging with you, but sometimes it's a bit buggy, a bit delayed. Um, or you can have them aggressive. Uh, uh, so typically I go with defensive here. And then guarding behavior, again, do you want them to rush at anything that comes in range? Or do you want them to wait until there's been a direct threat posed to your environment? I typically put that on defensive as well. But a lot of that comes from my roleplay uh uh, server experiences where you don't want things on aggressive because you're trying to roleplay with people not attack and kill them on sight uh, the chase range I usually drop down a little bit just because I don't know I don't want them running off too far away from me um, yeah and up here you can also give him a name so um, we shall call this guy let's think he's a smelter um, so we'll call him uh, Sammy Sammy the smelter Okay, whoever smelt her dealt her. Good. Let's get you some better clothes. And uh, just because we got some stuff in, in stock here on the armor bench. Uh, actually, we'll put this on you. And some of those and some of those. I think that's what we've got. And uh, when we look, so his armor currently is zero. Uh, but we put these on him. He now has an armor of 14. Okay, nothing special. Um, but they won't, the durability doesn't go down. So one of the benefits of putting this armor on the thralls when it's a bit damaged like that is uh, that uh, it doesn't uh, uh, drop down anymore. And it doesn't really affect how they move and those kinds of things either. So um, what that means is you can typically what you do is if it was a thrall that you'd want to have as a fighter with you, um, you would um, uh, put heavy armor on them so that they can withstand as much pressure as possible, that kind of thing. So anyway, there we go. We have our very first uh, thrall achieved. Now, obviously, if you're playing on standard settings or uh, a server with, with standard settings, then or well, settings that aren't quite so buff, then that whole procedure would take you, you know, obviously a little bit longer. But essentially, that's how it goes. So we have our first... Uh, our first team member, as it were. Uh, actually, we can put the blacksmith's uh, apron on him, which is perfect. There we go. It's only cosmetic, but now he looks more the part. Yes, I like it. Um, and what we see is when we look in... Uh, let's see. When we look in the blacksmith's table, because he is a blacksmith, uh, not a smelter, sorry, he's a blacksmith, uh, you will see that he applies here as crafting bonuses. Uh, and if we click this little plus symbol, you'll see the numbers. He's a tier two. So again, already pretty good for a starting position. Uh, light attacking damage plus 3.7%. So if I make tools that, for example, like these ones, I could try making a new set now um, if we want to spend the materials. And it should give us something that has got 3.7% additional damage uh, on top of what we have right now, which is 11 uh, heavy attack damage, three... Oh, sorry, these are your individual attacks. My I misunderstood that at first. Armor pen penetration buff, plus 3.7. So in other words, we hit plus 3.7% harder than we would before if we make a new weapon uh, with him on the... on the working on the table here. So max durability goes up by plus uh, 5.8, and encumbrance weight goes down by 8.3. So these all apply to whatever weapon or tool we manufacture here. So that's actually really quite significant, 3.7. So I'm going to expend just so that we can get the comparison because I'm learning two with this. Uh, we're going to get him to make another set of these poignards and we can do a quick comparison. I hope. Uh, I might, Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's how it works. Okay, let's see. So damage here is 12 now instead of uh, 11. Uh, weight 2.7 of the standard ones, 2.48 for the new ones. And armor penetration is 16%, which has uh, stayed the same. But the durability has gone up from 242 to 317. Actually, that don't count that because these are slightly damaged. Anyway, so we'll put those there. We'll put these here. Uh, we'll repair those just to have a backup set. 
So durability is 300 by standard on these, and on these ones, 317. So, of course, our attacks um, do uh, more damage. Armor penetration. A bit disappointed that the armor penetration number didn't move, but I don't know if that's an RNG thing or if that's just, um, you know, mathematically it didn't, uh, it didn't change. Uh, it doesn't show, like, that level of detail. Anyway, so... Still pretty cool, eh? We've got already these 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 deadly weapons for the level of the area we're in, and now they're even more damaging, and my attacks are stronger with them. So that's fantastic. That's that's real bonuses that I wasn't expecting to get uh, something like that straight away. But okay, and then if you got yourself a tier three blacksmith or a tier four named one, especially, then they might have special recipes. Um, additional things might appear here above. They'll put a line and additional set of recipes in there if he knew them but tier twos uh in this case he doesn't know any additional recipes um and things like smelters will give you a buff like um you'll get more resources from your processing or they may come with special recipes uh and so on and so forth so it's really worth investing the time uh especially if you're going for a longer stint and uh yeah it means you might have to spend less time gathering or you might get unlocked uh, recipes that you wouldn't otherwise have access to uh, and so on and so forth. All right, groovy. Uh, now, let's see what uh, we can do next. I think we need to get some iron tools. Uh, some more iron tools. So let's throw some more iron onto the bench here. I'm going to get a hatchet for wood gathering. I've noticed actually as well that the iron pick is gathering me resin directly off the trees as well as bark. So uh, resin can be used in a number of different processes. Two quite important ones to me, one uh, relating to building. One is to allow us to make insulated wood uh, once we have unlocked the drying uh, racks. Uh, and the other is to be able to um, make uh, some stone consolidant to make um, hardened bricks, which are used for tier three building materials. Uh, also, all things that we're going to look at as we move forward with this playthrough. Uh, so here we go. Uh, we now are upgrading to a metal hatchet and we have a brand new tool in our arsenal. Uh, the iron sickle. Uh, and, you know, all that fibre gathering we've been doing by hand and it's kind of a bit painstaking and meh. Well, watch this. Swing, swing. Look at that. Plus 34 fibre, plus 16 fibre. Oh, finally. Now we can go out and get a thousand more fiber with a couple of swings of the sickle. Yes. All right, let's harvest this area here quickly. Oh, they've already re they just respawned as I said that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Are uh, you Okay, this Oh, okay. Is that uh, I don't know what's going on here. Um okay. Let's just kill you. Uh, you're not worth all that much because you're just a tier one as well. Okay, but let's have some rough wraps from you. Thank you. Very kind of you. In fact, I'll use one straight away. Thanks for the heal. <laughs> so I want, I'm assuming the others will start uh, respawning in as well. I think that bug, I don't know what that was. That was that was weird. It was almost like her dead body came back to life or something for, for a moment there. Uh, okay, the things you experience in Conan sometimes, yeah, can be interesting, shall we say. All right, uh, let's get some more stuff going on the tannery, I guess, because we're going to start needing some leather, more leather and some tar eventually. Groovy. Uh, I got some more bark here to throw on. All right, but yeah, now we can... Uh, now we can manage the fiber situation a lot more efficiently than we used to. We can put a half of that in there, make some more twine while we're going out and about. Uh, yeah. Awesome. All right, let's put some wood in there. Cool. Get rid of these bugs, the human flesh. Actually, we might need to make some more. Well, we'll need to make some more gruel later, so we'll just throw like 100 in there. Put some more seeds in there. We won't make the gruel yet because it the seeds and the plant fiber won't go off. Whereas, as you see here, the uh, the gruel obviously will. <clears throat> All right. 
Coolio. So, next up, it wouldn't be too bad to get ourselves a fighter to fight alongside us. Now, we could grab one of the ones here. Um, only thing is, they're a little bit on the weak side. Um, let's just see who pops up. Maybe we get a fight or two or something. Oh, this looks like it might be a cook with this kind of outfit. Let's see. Hello. Enemies approaching. Uh, it is a cook. Okay, let's take you. All right. Easy does it. Uh, let's get these wrapped here. Hopefully the other one won't. Didn't get alerted. Okay, so same procedure as before. We grab the cook. This is handy. Um, a tier one cook isn't really going to do anything special for us, I don't think. Um, but they might open up the one or the other recipe. And also, I kind of like it. I like having uh, some of these folks just around the settlement, just kind of doing their job. We can assign them basically to work on the cook's cooking station here. Uh, we might need to turn the cooking station around. I'm not sure which way around it has to be. Because basically the cook will come in and sort of just kneel next to the campfire. Um, and if, if it's facing the other way, the, 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 the wrong way around, so to speak, in that corner there, then she'll probably end up kneeling outside the building and it'll all look a bit peculiar. So, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, all right, there we go. So, fantastic. That's two for one. Actually, let's see who the last one over here is. Because, again, if they're a fighter or something... Actually, how long is this going to take? Let's not... Oh. Too late, I triggered them. No, no, I got away in time. Yeah, this one's nearly done. So let's uh, get this. Uh, it's an archer? Or? Yeah. Oh, just an exile. So just this is like the lowest of the low. In terms of their uh, strength and everything. But uh, yeah, we can grab them. I don't think we can put them in here because it's uh, a lesser wheel. Yeah, no more room at the station. Okay. So, we will have to wait for this one to finish. It nearly is. It finished. So, we click it again. Uh, we collect that one. Bang. Then we click it again, and in they go. So, this one is kind of listed as an archer. Um, or just an exiled tier one. But we'll take them. Uh, if nothing else, they might be a distraction for our enemies. Um, and again, same procedure as before with the cook. Uh, we just free up some space here. We put our cook on the hot bar for a moment. And we go... Oh, yes, we need to put them in the world. Like so. And, uh, yeah, you're a cook. Brilliant. And actually, she's already off and she's walking inside to go and uh, work at the cooking station. Yes, it's the right way around. So she even has a little stool now. Okay, I think they changed that. Because I think she used to kneel down. Um, at the cooking station. I wonder if they changed it as well so it just works out where there's space. Um, but now when we look in here, we see we've got a crafting bonus, 1.25 speed up. Um, and that's it. Because it's a basic campfire, there's no additional recipes and things like that. But if we have a cooking station, which we can unlock later on, um, then she might, I don't know again, in level one maybe not, um, but it's possible she might add an additional recipe on there based on like she's a Shemite. So it might depend on uh, uh, yeah her background that kind of thing um, so I should be able to yes rename her as well as well as uh, giving her some armor and weaponry and things like that but for now we'll just leave it as it is because we don't really have a lot spare um, what's our oh I know because of Kelly cakes we're gonna have we're gonna call our cook Kelly there we go go check out twitch.tv forward slash Kelly cakes for some awesome cake processing. Uh, did I? Yeah, this is done already. Cause okay, cause this one's so basic, so basic. There we go. Uh, and you're gonna be what? Can we'll call you Red Shirt Number One, Red Shirt One, because you are essentially gonna die really quickly, really. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I think we should take him on a little adventure uh, with us and see uh, see what happens. And we could. So what we could do is make some armor, you know, some extra pieces of armor and put them on. But to be honest, he's probably going to die really quickly. So I'm just going to use up the freebies 
um, that we've got. Uh, yeah, armor 14. Okay, and now one thing we do want to do is we want to give them some food. So giving them different kinds of food. So let's see here. Chase, defensive, defensive. Uh, chase down to 15 meters. Okay, good. Uh, what we do, uh, when you give them different types of food, they will gain a buff to different stats. So in this case, um, here's their growth statistics and chances. Sorry, I did that a bit quickly. I held the E, the interaction button, over them, and I click on stats. And in here you can see their effects. Increase strength, increase damage by 10%. Um, and you can see their current scores. Strength 0, Agility 0, Vitality 1, um, Grit 0, and here are their, typically their chances of growing at each level up. Um, here's their max health, 145 right now. They have no perks as they level up. There. If they get to level 10, they get a perk, and so on and so forth. Um, and those are just RNG, but you can also re-roll them. I don't know much about that right now. Um, and then they will get bonuses based on the kind of food that we've given them to eat. So I would say the next thing we can do is hold interaction on him again, set him to follow, and red shirt one is now following you. Uh, let's go... Actually, we can give him our other... Mm, no, he has not He has a bow, and that I guess that's his preferred weapon. So, um, yeah, let's go fight some crocodiles and basic things and as long as he's around in the party with us like this when we engage stuff oh they won't swim by the way uh, but he will magically appear across the water when we get to the other side that's just a limitation of the game um yeah there's some shellbacks over here right and a crocodile so let's go have a fight and get this guy a couple of level ups and hopefully with the food he's eating he'll get some nice buffs to his stats for example. Okay. So he waits until I've attacked for him to get involved in the fight. But look at that. Look at that. Even with just his basic skills. And he's got quite a nice weapon, this Falcata. Like the one we had in store. So that's kind of nice. Um, uh, he was able to kill that guy. And he will level up, obviously, at the beginning very, very quickly. Because he's so low down. I'm just going to harvest that. And now, if we look at his statistics, we can see his health has gone from 145 to 180, uh, which is a good jump. And here's his scores have jumped. So he gained a vitality point. He gained two grip points and agility point. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, let's uh, attack this one. Even though it's not doing anything to us, really. Uh, he's actually going to use his bow as well. That's great. Marvelous. Very good, very good. Uh, and he will use the food that's in his inventory uh, to heal up with as well. So you have to remember to check that they've got some food on them. Otherwise, no bueno. And again, you can learn which foods do what with a bit of trial and error. Or you can simply look it up on uh, uh, the fandom wiki, for example. Um, and yeah, choose. If you want them to be an expert archer, then pick a certain uh, skill set. Uh, or or uh, food set, rather. Um, if you want them to go into strength, if you want them to go into vitality, and so forth. Just learn which one does what. Um, and there you go, another message on the screen. The follower has leveled up. Uh, he didn't get a health buff this time, because he's still 180. Um, but he got, looks like a grit buff and an agility buff. Which is good, because he's using a bow, so the more he gets agility points, uh, the better. And there you go. Let's go. Come on then, red shirt, you're doing well. So far, so far, so good. Uh, let's see. Let's go for a bit more of a challenge with the hyenas up here. This should be interesting. I'm not trying to get him killed. But, you know, we are on an away mission and he is wearing a red shirt. Well, you know, his own blood soaked red shirt. Yeah, this is, this is a bit more dangerous. But let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, okay. So the hyenas ignored me and went straight for him, which is kind of good. Alright, he's doing pretty well. If you consider how scary those hyenas were before for us on our own, I like it. I like having Red Shirt with us. Uh, he again didn't gain vitality, vitality, 
Um, but he got, uh, oh, he didn't get any points in here by the looks of it. Curious. Hmm, don't know. All right. Um, but in addition, the attribute sets that I've been putting my points into, um, there's also this track here called Authority. And Authority determines the amount of damage your followers deal and the amount of concussive damage you deal. So uh, you get pokes like Irritate, which means that your active followers will goad enemies attempting to force them to attack your follower, giving you time to, exa for example, sneak up behind and do sneak attacks and stuff like that. So um, I definitely want to invest into this and give some buffs to my followers because I really enjoy that kind of playstyle. Some people prefer to be on their own, and I like having some followers around to uh, do the dirty work, as it were. Um, in fact, let's just invest a point into that already and see what happens. Uh, so if we look at his stats now, I don't think that has an immediate effect. I think I need to uh, go up a little bit further. All right. Uh, there was a little hyena pupper there as well. And one of the things that we are we could unlock, uh, in fact, I think we'll do just for fun, just to show it, is uh, let's grab ourselves a little pupper. So you just go up to them, get close enough and uh, hit E a couple of times. Sometimes it's, it's a funny angle as, as things can be sometimes uh, in the game. So just hit E and you will pick them up. Uh, they usually weigh quite a lot, 50 kilos. So be careful, don't go picking up too many of them at once or make sure you have enough encumbrance. Uh, one of the things you can do is give them to your follower because they never get over cucumbered. Oh, look, iron. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have a look at putting an animal pen in uh, and and learning those skills. Uh, let's go. Let's grab a little bit more stone. Let's go back to the base and uh, see where we're at and go. We'll probably do another metal run and get some more stuff cooking. But more excitingly, we've got a bunch of things ready to be unlocked. Uh, we can get into some alchemy uh, and we can get into some uh, other stuff that I can't remember right now. So yeah, let's go back to base. Uh, I think I'm going to need probably even more fiber. So let's just grab a few bushes. Well, oh, we're over cucumbered. Oh, well, come here, red shirt. Let's, uh, let's give you some stuff to carry, buddy. Oh, do you mind carrying this heavy rock and iron for me wonderful doesn't mind at all so yeah again having some followers whether you choose to go the animal path or uh the npc thrall path uh it's really worth doing because they can um can help you carrying this stuff as well so uh okay we've ended up over cucumbered again anyway because i'm forgetting about how much let's just throw this reptile hide away okay we're good all right, onwards. Let's go unlock some more stuff. Ooh, eggs. Can't resist. Ooh, eggs. Wonderful. Wait, thank you. <laughs> I nearly missed one. Uh, for anyone wondering about the dive there, uh, when you first jump with spacebar by default, um, you can press the C button, the crouch button, and it will perform that lovely dive, which works into treasure if you have a treasure room, uh, or just into water or anything, really, even on the ground rolling along. It's just kind of a fun little side thing to, uh, to do moving around. Now, if you don't want them following you around everywhere, uh, then you can do uh, stop following, but the best thing to do is stand guard so they don't go missing and go anywhere else. And you can actually put them from an animation point of view on one of your stations if you prefer or just have them guarding uh, one of the things you can do uh, is put them to stand guard by the door uh, which he then didn't do he stood <laughs> okay we'll just put that down to a little funcom uh, missive don't know uh, okay let's go let's put some more hides on here to go uh, and uh, yeah, uh, red shirt give me that iron will you buddy okay we'll take we'll take the encumbrance for a moment okay let's put some more iron on the cook let's see we've got enough for some more tools and some more weaponry here yep okay so he did really well so conveniently he came with this fault cutter as well uh, already so 
I don't need to give him any other special weaponry. Uh, and I will. I'm still a bit over cucumber. That's why I'm walking just one kilo over. Uh, let's go over to our box here. I think this was full though. Yeah. <coughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think the time has come that we need to enhance the base with, wait for it, wait for it, a second box. Yes, yes, marvelous. Okay, and we'll use this one for basic resources, I think. So uh, let's put most of this in here. Just to have it as a reserve, put some stone there. Let's go in here, grab the stone, the bark, the resin. Okay, so this one will be for resources and the other one will be for like other things and stuffs. So a bit of that, a bit of this, a bit of that. Uh -huh, a bit of that. Okay, put my pupper in there for a minute. Now, let's have a look at what we can unlock. Oh, actually, let's put this food away first. Uh, da -da. Go cook. Wonderful. Eggs. Marvellous. Maybe we'll be able to unlock cooking at some point. We've got some worker bees. We've got some of that. Okay. We're good. Uh, okay. Throw these away. Boom. Pockets are now mostly clear. And hyena pelt on here. 52. Go. Wonderful. Look at that. Look how much of the hide we've got. Brilliant. Um, okay, let's have a look. Knowledge. So in here, we're now level 16. Uh, and we can unlock a furniture maker for one point. Uh, I'll show you all about that in a minute. That's all kind of decor, decoration and stuff for your buildings. Um, there are these struts things here, but they really just do decorative beams. So it's not really worth two points, especially early on. You should save them. Decorative is entirely up to you. If you want to decorate your nice base, one of the things the furniture maker allows is it allows us to make a uh, an artisan bench, uh, and the artisan bench, uh, which we'll make in a moment, uh, contains all sorts of goodies. Um, okay, but from a survival point of view, we can now unlock the fireball cauldron and get into our first bit of alchemy. Uh, we can also unlock a journeyman butcher, which allows us to make an iron skinny knife and iron cleaver. So more hides and materials uh, as well as more meats and uh, better better meats and things uh, there are also these improved healing wraps crafted at an alchemy bench um probably worth unwrapping <laughs> unwrapping see what i did there by accident okay and that is uh, that leaves us with four points left over now there's a whole bunch of swords uh there are some wooden targs so better shields um i have some already unlocked because of the dlcs that i have so i'm probably just going to make one of these to tide me over um, but typically you might want to go wooden targe if you're doing sword and board go that way and you'll also see that there are these epic versions of everything and that comes much further down the line see that unlocks at level 60 high 13 point cost and things like that so we probably won't get to that in this uh beginners oriented uh playthrough um okay armor wise we're pretty good again there are epic armors and things further down the track there are things like saddles and all this other kind of stuff uh, that we need to get into. But first, we would have to unlock um, <clears throat> uh, the ability to work with uh, the animals and that, which is here under Thrall Taker. Uh, there is also Apprentice Tamer, Stable Master. We're getting ourselves a horse. We'll get into that in a much later episode. Um, and uh, so for the pupper that we just got, just for funsies and for showing completeness, I'm going to unlock Apprentice Tamer. Uh, and we will put ourselves a little, a small animal pen out uh, and try and train up our hyena if we can uh, work out what it wants to eat. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I want to unlock immediately? I don't think so. So we've got one point left and I think I'm just going to sit on that point for now. Okay. Right. Let's see what we need next. Crafting stations. We've unlocked alchemy. So we have the fire cauldron. That is 50 metal. Uh, iron bars that is and 20 twine uh, so we should be able to cover that and then for the alchemist bench 
uh, we need another 10 iron bars and then a load of wood and stone. So we should be good, I think, for most of that. Under carpentry, we'll now find the artisan table. These are just variants of them that have just an aesthetic uh, different style. But we'll stick to the uh, basic non-DLC uh, non stuff as much as possible. Um, and then here we go. We've got an animal pen. It's quite a big building. Um, or we've got the small animal pen, which I think will be fine for our needs for now. So that's 75 stone and 100 wood. Um, yeah, and that's all we've unlocked there so far. So let's get some resources in our pockets. 700 stone. Let's grab ourselves, uh, I don't know, 300 wood. Hopefully, yeah, we're not encumbered by that. Uh, we're going to need some metal, I think it was. Uh, da, 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 let's see. Uh, 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 companions. Ah, no, we can make the small animal pen. Oh, there we go. So even this is sizable, right? So we'll put it a little bit set further back. Uh, also, when you have these out, uh, you can press R and they adjust to the terrain. So like that. There's only a certain amount that they will, you know, angle and everything. Um, if you don't want them to do that, press R again. Um, and you see they level off. They they go like flap, purely horizontal again. So there we go. And it's green. We place that down. Uh, and it, this is similar to the uh, thrall wheel. Um, we just go and get our pupper. Uh, put it in there. And we get some uh, food. It's annoying that that guy isn't actually staying where he should uh, by that by that door. Um, I... Oh, we've just cooked all of the meat. I don't know if that's a... If that's, I wonder if they eat human flesh. We could try that. Uh, we'll get some shredded roast. And we'll try some grilled steaks as well. Oh, that's just enough to encumber me. Okay. Two kilos. Never mind. The, the slow walk of shame. <laughs> slow walk of shame. Oh, there's some more workers over there. Uh, okay. So, we put our pupper in. Okay, so the animal pen is uh, just a bigger version of this and allows you to do, like, I think three or so at a time. And then there's a really, really big one later on that we can unlock that will allow you to do, like, I don't know, five or something. Um, but uh, for our purposes right now, this is enough. Uh, if I put that there, that doesn't work. So you, you'll know it works when it appears in the crafting queue. Uh, if we put the grilled steak in there, that doesn't work. If we put the shredded roast in there, that doesn't work. So I think what it needs is raw food. Raw flesh. So how about... Let's take a uh, red shirt with us so he can get some more uh, experience. How about we rough up the locals again? You know what's funny is there'll probably be a good one that I want. Hmm... Now, here's one of the other things you can do. You can give Red Shirt a beat stick. So, a truncheon. We need eight pieces of leather. Uh, and he will help you knock out the enemy. So, if I make another truncheon. And then I've got to make sure that mine is repaired as well. So, there we go. Right. So, if what you do in this case is you take their weapons away from them, you give them the beat stick, and they will automatically pull that out as the only viable weapon that they've got. Uh, and yeah, he can help us to knock out uh, these other so-and-sos that we want to come and have work for us. So, I'm going to give that a go. And we'll see if, there are any, if there's any good ones there, right? So, again, these are only very low levels, but it's just for kind of getting the getting the start get starting the little worker set up all right what are you you are an exile one so you're no good i don't want you you're an exile one and you're an armorer okay that that actually could be quite decent so okay i've got to be careful i want to kill the right ones here Okay, killed that guy. Oh no, our blacksmith has come across with his longsword. Oh, cease and desist. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. 
If we can knock him out before he gets killed. Oh, no. Sammy. Damn it, Sammy. Okay, so... <laughs> Good lesson learned there for me um, is don't let your uh, defensive thralls at your house be anywhere near the place where you're trying to knock others out. Ah, okay. Well, we we learned. We learned that. There you go. No hiding that. Never mind, eh? Okay, that's not working yet. There we go. Human flesh. So we're using the cleaver here to get as much meat as possible. And I'm going to see if raw flesh is what uh, is what the hyena wants to eat. Uh, oh, we got some dried meat there. Okay. So you see how I'm cutting, but it's not actually giving me anything on the right hand side there. That's how you know um, that it's kind of not working. Um, so you just move position and it should start working eventually once you get the right slot. Um, okay, here we go. So human flesh. There, look. It's going to be a tamed spotted hyena because it's eating the human flesh. That's what it wanted to eat. So it's in the queue and now we just have to wait for that to be done. As you can see, it's not going to take very long. It's a low level animal, but we've got the settings turned up for the session. So great. So it just needed raw flesh. So we'll have a pupper. Now, you can only have one uh, follower actively following you by default. Uh, you can invest heavily in authority. And if you get all the way to the end, you can choose war party perk, which allows your maximum followers to increase from uh, by one. But your statistics uh, that you've invested in will no longer have an influence um, on your followers. So, um, and the alternate is well trained and your active followers will have increased attributes. So you can either have less followers, but they're more capable, or you can have more followers and go with numbers rather than, um, rather than pure numbers, uh, uh go <laughs> numbers rather than numbers. Well put grumbles. Well put. Um, but yes, I mean, you can either have the number of warm bodies increase with them not being as strong individually, or you can have very strong individual with you i believe it might be possible to have an animal with you and uh, an npc thrall humanoid um but i'm not certain about that so once the doggo is done um that will be something that we can test and look it's already a third done so it won't take too long right it's night time now so let's put you back on guard perhaps you'll actually stand at the door this time yeah kind of a little bit in the way but less in the way than you were before thank you uh, what we got cooking here? What do we got cooking, Kelly? Nothing right now. Okay. So let's put some of this food back away. Uh, we got this dried meat we just picked up. So drying food and everything is something we're going to get into once we've unlocked the drying capability. We don't have that knowledge yet. Soon, TM. Uh, drying comes in with. Where does the drying come in? I don't see it here. I don't see it here. Oh, it's here. It's under this section here. Primitive cook. So we've got bonfire, then fissure, and then dry, dried preserves. And we can dry wood for insulated wood building, um, which is awesome stuff. Some of my favorite in the game, even though it's not the best tier. Um, it's one of the best looking to my mind's eye. Um, and then we've got fluid press. And here we go. This is a stove. So I was talking about that proper cooking later. And we unlock much better meals. Some will give off buffs against the cold, for example, and the heat and stuff like that. So some will do things, I think, buff things like stamina and whatnot. So yeah, there's lots of recipes. These are just the ones that we unlock. Then you've got the cooks that might have special recipes that come with them, depending on their background and everything, their training. Um, and then on top of that, there are recipes dotted all over the map that we can unlock by finding books or uh, uh, and that kind of thing. So, all right. Uh, so we were also looking at medium uh, armor, but we need a lot more metal pieces for that. So that could be something that we work on next uh, as well, now that we have the thrall and everything. Uh, we can work on... Uh, oh, there you go. There's another 33 iron bars. Wonderful. So back up over 100. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. 
All right, let's see what we need, though, for getting into alchemy next. So first of all, 50. Oh my goodness, this is going to use up all of our metal again, I think, to get these two tables down. So alchemy. Uh, okay, there's only 10 iron bars for the alchemist bench. Uh, I think we can get this one into the house. It's not too big. Mm, it's a little bit fiddly. Let's see. Uh, uh, there we go. That's not bad. That looks uh, eh, not quite lined up with the wall. Let's see if we can move it a bit closer. Oh, I think we have to move it right out of the way first. Bum, bum, bum. There we go. That's better. Okay, and in here we've got recipes for making aloe extract. So that's a stronger version of the aloe extract we've been using to heal ourselves with. Uh, we can make these healing wraps, which is leather plus aloe. So a little bit expensive, but we're getting a lot of leather. And then there are these uh, other uh, potions here. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. A potion that resets knowledge points. So there you go. I talked about resetting knowledge points earlier. Uh, yellow lotus bloom, bone meal, and water filled glass flask. Uh, we can also make water orbs here, um, but we don't have any of the glass flasks. We have to cast those. We'll get into that separately. Uh, but certainly I think making some of these better potions uh, would be a good call. We've got a lot of aloe, so we can grab that now and put that in here. It's got a proper home. Um, so let's make uh, a couple of batches of that. Don't cost us nothing. Nothing expensive. Uh, and then the healing wraps. Mm, do we? Mm, we could spare the leather. We have quite a lot, but to be honest, I don't think we need that. We've got these rough wraps. They'll do for now. Uh, they'll heal us up for now. But I think upgrading our potions um, is probably a good call for a next step. So I'm going to put these weak ones in here. I've got them in reserve. Should we? Should anything bad happen to us? In fact, we'll keep a few of it in our pocket, because why not? But definitely want to have these stronger ones on our hotbar. Excellent. There we go. Okay. We might as well make all of those. I didn't know if they were going to make multiple batches or one at a time. But we need fewer, I guess, overall, because they're so strong. Well, as I said, we'll keep some of those in our back pocket. Um, all right onwards so i think i've got too many of these arrows again we do have a bowl but we just got to watch the weight four and a half kilos probably not, we're not using that many arrows there we go uh oopsie i didn't mean to put all those branches there let's do that okay um all right so and then the other thing is let's uh, put some iron bars on there and make ourselves some medium armor. So we've got basically light armor everywhere. We might as well replace. Uh, I need a medium. So let's do medium here so that we don't mess that up. Medium harness craft. Uh, then we can have the medium tasset for which it's going to make the medium padding. All right, right click on it there and it replaces our light chest piece, um, which we can uh, either keep in reserve or we can put onto our, I think we can put it onto our red shirt, try and keep them alive a little bit longer. Uh, so you see here it made the medium padding, but then it cleared the queue. Even though I stayed in the table, it didn't actually make the tacit. So yeah, strange little bug that one. All right, oh, man, if we can actually find a red shirt somewhere for the red shirt guy, that wouldn't be too bad either. Okay, let's see. So our me our armor score now is 207 medium. So we've got medium gauntlets with carry capacity. We've got carry capacity here as well from, from that and carry. So and we've buffed our carry capacity back up to 220. Um, and we've buffed our armor value up to 207 not too shabby uh, we can of course make some more uh, if we're going to go out in dangerous places we should put some 
proper weaponry. Okay, so you've got trousers. We can put you that armor. So your armor score is now 29. Not bad. Not really that good, though. Uh, and we need lots of leather. So let's get some more leather. 72. Wonderful. We've got hundreds and hundreds of... Uh, more uh, hides so we could make a load more so medium padding heavy padding we need thick leather and we don't have that yet so let's make a couple more of these so shoes and uh, uh, we need shoes and a hat so that should be these two um and to be honest we're better off making some medium armor for our other dude as well for red shirt you know the better we armor them up the longer they're going to survive it's just costing us a lot of our metal so making us have to do another resource run. But, you know, it's more adventuring, uh, more stabby stabby. What's to complain about? Nothing. <clears throat> so how are we doing in here? I mean, look, we'll put 300 on that rack. We might as well, eh? Uh, we can put uh, all that twine in there. Actually, we want to keep a small amount on us. Uh, let's make a couple more of those. Let's go put some more hide on the thingy bobby. Alright, turn that on. That's going to give us another 104 leather. Perfect. Alright. Excellent. So, uh, aloe extract. Okay, so we get a full stack of 10 aloe. And we've got some in reserve. Awesome. Doesn't expire, so that's good as well. Um, okay, so we needed a medium cap for ourselves. Uh, and I think medium boots. Yes, medium boots. And then we're good. And these gauntlets we could probably repair on here. I don't know if we'll have the knowledge. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So we put that there. Click repair. Oh, we can repair it. Excellent. And then we need a pair of medium boots. Excellent. Look at that. Great durability. And that as well. Okay. So either we can give these hand-me-downs to Red Shirt. Uh, or we make some more medium armor for him. Uh, I can't actually remember which pieces he had again. So we gave him the light chest piece and he's got the light bottoms. He's got the shoes already. Uh, so he needs the hand wraps and the head. But again, they give the less. So the head he can take the light. Hand wraps, okay. Um, but let's make him some, you know... We'll make him a good headpiece. And we'll keep that in reserve. And hand wraps, we can make him some light ones at least. There we go. Just with the hut roll with the hides. And then we have some stuff that we can put on some of our other people as well. So not bad. Uh, did it fail to make them again? It did. So there we go. Strange bug, that one. Okay. Good, 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 good. Yeah, we're not into the heavy padding yet. All right. Here, my friend, Mr. Redshirt. Have this hat. And have these gloves. And you now have an armor of 65. Not too shabby. Uh, let's give you back your bow. Oops. Damage three. We could probably make him a better bow as well. But that's fine. We don't have to go uh, over the top. What's he using? Flint head arrow. Health damage three from the bone arrows. Health damage three. Okay, same difference. Fine. Um, all right, red shirt. Let's go. We need to go and get more metal, unsurprisingly. <laughs> um, let's put all this uh, rock and wood away actually before we go oh. excuse I, pardon I 
So resource box, uh, wood, stone, fiber, weight down to 50%, carrying way too much of this meat. Don't need really any of that. Uh, maybe we'll take like 10 of these. Keep us, oh, and maybe we give our other chap another 10 as well. Yes, okay, you were hungry. Wonderful. Okay, and then, last but not least, before we head out, how's Doggo doing? Oh, he's producing dung already. So you can leave an animal in here, which is where maybe the other bigger pens come in handy, uh, and they'll create dung for you, which you can use towards uh, composting and stuff like that. But we're going to grab Doggo, and I want to find out if I can have Doggo with us. Okay, looks like it. You're guarding. Let's have a look at your info. Okay, you don't have any of those other stats and things. Uh, can you follow me? No, Red Shirt is no longer following and Doggo is. Okay, so Doggo, we're going to get you to stand guard over here by the house. There we go. And then Red Shirt, you're going to follow us. Let's go. There you go. So that's how the... Uh, dog stuff works do I risk it for oh let's not do that again we've done that already okay we're going with they didn't work so they'll still be there when we come on <laughs> let's go on the iron run and I can show you uh, the pickaxe and then we can go back and make the uh, alchemy bowl and uh, yeah show you some of the, the next steps to go through all right here we go Oh, swing and a miss. Nice, very nice. Good bit of work. Moving on. All right. This way. Should get a few more fights. Should be some shale backs that want to give us a bit of a scrap or we can just pick a fight with them anyway because why not get him well done you did nothing <laughs> well well fought all right Um, but I think having an animal like a shellback, for example, can be quite handy early on. Um, there are different foods that you can get that will allow you to have a orange or, or a percentage chance of rolling a better uh, version of uh, some of these animals. Um, but I'll leave that up to you if you want to look that up uh, or not. Entirely up to the individual. Uh, if there's something that I suddenly remember, oh, if I do this and this, then you might see it here. But uh, I'm not going to go out of my way. All right. Boom. Okay. Crocomadeal. Get him. Good hit. Get him. Nice, well done. All right, uh, there's a little camp here which has also got an iron node next to it. So let's go and attack them. Getting a little bit bolder now, you see, with this uh, increased 249 medium armor. I'm getting a little bit more uh, in their face about it. Okay, there's a tier one cook and a couple of tier one fighters. So yeah, not up to much. Ooh, good hit. Go on, shooter. Oh, swinging it. Where the heck was that aimed, red shirt? Oh, my lord. You are useless. Uh, okay, I'll take the flush. And you? Ah. Mm, nope, you actually just got a load of rubbish, but at least you did have more on you, so we can prove to people that it is a bit of a fluke. Oh, look, another truncheon. <laughs> How convenient. All right, well, we're going to just empty that out. That box seems to have the same stuff in it each time. 
All right, wonderful. There's the iron. Let's go. Uh, you know, we could get the hide, I suppose, from all these creatures. Because if nothing else, if we get over cucumbered, we can just give it to uh, Red Shirt to carry back for us. Again, another huge benefit of having an NPC follow along is not only will you do better fighting uh, overall, unless you take on something that's way too strong, uh, but you have some, uh, you know, a pack meal with you, and that's hugely beneficial. Like we could harvest like some thousands of stone or whatever, and the, it's only limited by how many stacks they've got essentially. It looks like mini me wearing similar armor like that. You're just copying me. Jenkins. <laughs> if we get a better one, we'll call him Jenkins and we'll do some silly roleplay stuff with him. Uh, but not one that's going to just die so quickly. Oh, I missed this entirely before. There was a thing to read here. Ah. There you go. You can listen to that as we go through and get this iron again. So this is just basically the mini iron run that we're doing here. There's way better areas, but... Uh, this is convenient, it's very close by, and for the little that we need, it is sufficient to get us started. But we will find some better areas later on. Alright, level up, nice. Uh, and you can see here, look, 450 plus. Uh, so the benefit of having the iron tools, it's really worth it. Grab yourself the iron pick first. Maybe a weapon of choice, like we did. If you want to defend yourself a bit better. Um, and uh, yeah, you can have a lot of fun grabbing those uh, those iron nodes just from this small iron run. It's not very much and we will need way, 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 way more, especially if we're going to build something nicer. Higher tier stuff, you'll see that once we get into steel making. Uh, we're now over cucumbered, so let's get one more tree and then give red shirt something to carry. Wonderful. All right. So, red shirt, do you mind carrying all that wood and 500 ironstone? Now, we've got to be careful that we don't get him killed while he's carrying a lot of cool stuff for us. That would be uh, inappropriate. <laughs> all right. Let's grab a whole load of wood while we're here. We can get some more stone as well because we're probably going to need that too for a little building projects. I might build a little working workshop area or something open air for all the blacksmithing stuff so it's not just sitting outside by the house but again we'll see i want to have my focus really on this uh learner driver uh playthrough content more than that uh let's see let's get our sickle out we did bring our sickle yes Number six grab some more of this while we're out here just because we're a bit limited back home on the home of little island. And again, now we're getting loads more, but it feels like it's a lot. Uh, trust me, it really will run out very quickly. So, you know, it's a survival game with crafting and building. You're going to need a lot of resources. All right fiber so we can come home with another thousand fiber or something oh sorry about your knees there buddy no red shirt oh i'm over cucumbered again already i didn't even collect any uh, uh any wood okay let's take your bow off you for a minute then and you can carry a thousand fiber for us okay let's uh head home i want to grab some more rocks but can't carry that much more How are we doing? 193 of 220. Okay. Okay, 204. That'll do. Uh, let's look at your statistics. You're now level 3. You have 251 uh, hit points. Again, it's not really much, but in this relatively new newbie-friendly area, uh, it works quite well for us unless we took on a boss fight or something. Uh, and he's got 4 agility, 4 vitality, and 4 grit points. So, going quite well. Um, but you can see also that Whilst he does level quite quickly, he's only level 3 now, and he gets a perk at level 10, the first perk. So it does take a little while. Uh, let's get more aloe. Um, which again, we can uh, 
can do gather nicer amounts of those now. Oh really? Let's go then, Mr. Croc. TikTok, TikTok. You picked the wrong fight. You, you did pick the wrong fight. There we go. Down you go. Uh, have I got? I probably have enough capacity left to grab some more hide. All right, yeah, two one eight, perfect. All right, let's go home. Continue. Come on, buddy. Let's go. All right, you want to give me that iron? I'm going to chuck that in here quickly. So here's where, if we built two of these, obviously we could process twice as quickly. Um, but, you know, just... You can uh, double down if you want to. Uh, or just do it this way if you want to. Either way, nothing... No real wrong way to play this, per se, I would, I would suggest. Uh, all right, we're going to need that in a minute for something else. Uh, what else were you carrying for me? All that wood and all that fiber. Okay, let's get you onto standing guard. We'll just put you... Yeah, we'll put you there, sitting in front of the uh, smelter's thing. All right. Not sure what Sammy's looking at. Who's a good dog all? What are we going to call you? What are we call you Chuckles because you're a laughing hyena. I'm more like a cat than a dog. Call you Chuckles. There we go. <laughs> There's Chuckles. Um, okay. So, let's put this tar in here for a minute. But we, what we're going to do is we're going to want to make the alchemy station. And then I think that'll be a good place to, uh, to wrap up for now. Uh, what have we got here? More of that hide to be crafted. Wonderful. We put some more of this in here. Probably like another 300. Process that. 138 twines. Perfect. Uh, and then we can drop some. Well, we're going to need this in a minute, aren't we? The wood. So, yeah, let's put half of that in there. Put half of that in there. Okay, now we can walk around. Let's put some food here. Oh, I made the I cooked the gruel earlier by accident. Whoopsie. Okay, feral flesh, human flesh. Wonderful. We've picked up extra bed rolls, so keep getting bed rolls out of those boxes over there. Never bad to have a bed roll on you, but having like three or four, not so much. <laughs> uh, okay, some more aloe in here. Make some more of those. Sometimes you press craft the number and it doesn't work. So in that case, just press craft one and then you can press craft all or space bar after that and it, and it fixes another, you know, like I said, there's, there's a few little uh, hangover bugs that still exist in the game. Um, okay, uh, so number seven, alchemy station needs 50 metal and 20 twine. So there's our twine on the processing. And if we come out here... We should have the metal. There we go. Now, I really like the way... Wait, what did I... Oh, 50. Ew. Oh, really? We ran that low on the metal. Where did... No, I must have put it on the... Uh, there's still some on the... On the uh, armor's bench, right? Yeah, just enough. Okay. So, let's get the alchemy cauldron set up. We'll put this next to our bed for now. Uh, or uh, we don't really have that much room in here. We could put it in the middle. Put it just here like that. Okay. And the fireball cauldron, uh, which the cook... Oh, I didn't realize, but the cook actually applies a 1.25 bonus to that. That's awesome. Uh, and this is used to make stone consolidant, um, used to strengthen bricks, to turn bricks into hardened bricks for our tier 3 building. Uh, steel fire, which we're super interested in, which uses tar... Uh, and brimstone so we get our tar from over here and move that in here that's why we brought it indoors uh, so we need to go and collect brimstone that'll be another exciting adventure for us next time out uh, dragon powder which is used to make explosives and this is quite expensive to make and needs demon blood uh, as well as a lot of crystals so we'll have to find the cave full of crystals as well I think I know where one of those is uh, and then alchemical base which is used in much higher ingredients and processing later on. 
which needs ichor we can get from killing spiders for example um and silver and gold dust which we'll have to find silver and gold ore somewhere on the map um but the steel fire and the stone consolidant are used in your higher tier buildings or your tier three buildings so again we're well on our way uh to that and i think that's going to be a nice place where we can leave it uh and uh yeah look forward to the next episode where we go and get ourselves maybe a little bit of brimstone and just, do, just go a little bit further afield and do some more investigating. Maybe go and get our sorcery hooked up. All right. Until the next one, folks. Good vibes. Right. Well, uh, we came to have a chat with our locals again and something interesting happened. Uh, not so much in who we found, two exiles and then uh, this smelter who we'll actually uh, take with us. Uh, but actually, Redshirt went down. He was helping me with the truncheon work, uh, but he got a two-on-one situation. So we got to revive him uh, with E or holding E for revive and follow. Uh, and as I believe it, uh, yeah, we can pick him up like that. And uh, yeah, he's going to... Uh, hopefully he's going to be following us now. He is. Okay, wonderful. Uh, and he get they get up to three lifelines. This is part of the heroes update. Uh, and after that, they'll either die or you've got to take them back to your camp, and eventually it wears off with time, as I understand it. So uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Thought I'd show you that one. I was sneaking in a little bit of uh, quiet, busy work on the side here. Uh, but let's get ourselves this smelter and go bring her into the uh, into the fold, as it were. Uh, that should uh, reduce some of our costs and or times on processing. Again, only a tier one, unfortunately, but better than nothing. And gives the place more of a lived-in kind of feeling once more. Wonderful. Well, let's get you back on uh, guarding again, shall we? Stand guard. Uh, stand at the door, please. Uh, we've got uh, the artisan table, which we briefly mentioned previously. Uh, and as you can see, you can start making some lovely decor stuff. We can put a, a wall sign up, say who lives here, put some fences around, big sign. Uh, and there are some much nicer beds that we can make as well. So we might have to start thinking about some living quarters for our people. If I just briefly put this to all, uh, you can see all the various things that I have that unlocked that would be available to make. Some of these require some quite fancy uh, bits and bobs, uh, ingredients, uh, steel and whatever else. Uh, and others are just like bits of plant fiber or bits of stone and things. So don't be surprised if you start seeing a bit of decoration appear around the place as we move forward. All right, onwards.